run yesterday? You watched? You ran? I watched. Good job. You ran. Congratulations, everybody. Good. All the folks in wheelchairs, people in crutches. It's amazing. We're going to get them in here right now. The Alley Spirit. A great day. A uh, great day for Los Angeles. Arts and humanities are a key to the success of a city. Mr. Reyes and I, uh, also our colleague, Mr. Wesson, strongly believe that. Ms. Uh, Schechter, if we could get a few more staff chairs right here, that would be good. And if you need any help, let me know. Like, uh, Sal, if you could get those, that'd be good. So basically, uh, I'm going to open the meeting. So Madam Clerk, tell me when you're ready to open the meeting. Would you like to begin the meeting at this point? I or? would. Do OK. That. There are two items before the committee this morning. Right. Yes. Uh, item one is the discussion on the Department of Cultural Affairs current budget, their submittal for the 2010-11 budget, the impact of the early retirement incentive program, possible restructuring of department operations, and other related matters. There's also item two on the agenda, and that is a motion, Han Labange, relative to instructing the Department of Cultural Affairs to contract with Grand Vision to operate the Warner Grand Theater if there is a gap between the selection of a permanent operator or the department cannot continue to operate the facility. Well, we're going to hold number two for a report from the 15th district and their representatives at that time. We take number one first. Okay. Uh, just to let you know, the city of Los Angeles, as in all parts of, uh, I don't think there's a person in the room that hasn't been touched by the economic crisis that has uh, fallen upon the world, the United States, from Wall Street to Washington to Sacramento, now here to City Hall, and now here to Barnsdall, and to Holden Performing Arts Center, and to the Watts Towers, and to other places of great opportunity for art. It has affected us, and how we move forward is our challenge at this time due to the crisis that is uh, upon us. We're waiting for a representative of the city administrative officer to come to discuss the issue, which is very important, Mr. Reyes, on the basis of what is required for the transit occupancy tax that goes to help support the arts. That it's not general fund money, but it's transit occupancy tax. We in Los Angeles have established through the vision that those who visit help us promote the city. Our uh, variety of sources come to Los Angeles for our taxation, but those who stay in a hotel in Los Angeles pay an additional tax, which goes to the arts. And we're going to have that clarified. Uh, what I'd like to do, we have a lot of cards I want to hear from everybody. We run a one-minute clock in this committee when there's more than five cards. And there are more than five cards. If you need a little extra time, you're very much welcome to take that uh, as we go forward. But on this issue here, this committee has had uh, under its charge a variety of functions within the arts, parks, health, and aging. We had the, uh, a, a full hearing on our Department of Disability, a full hearing on our Department of Aging, a full hearing on our library department, uh, and we are having a full hearing on cultural affairs, which will also have a full hearing on recreation and parks and other entities behind us. With that being said, I'm going to get you a little more. You get a chair for your staff person yeah, right there real yeah. quick so you can get comfortable right in there. So we've got that right there. Do you want a chair? I'm fine. Okay, good. Okay, what we're going to do here, because I do want the city administrative officer to be here. They're not here at this. So she's on here at this way. If I could call for public comment right now, and you could uh, make your points. As I said, if you need additional time, let us know. Uh, we're going to fill up these three chairs right here. Uh, Sheila Lair, Lisa Adams, and Paul Gamberg. Hi. Hi. You can go first. You just come across. Thank you. You go first. Hi, my name is Lisa Adams. Thank you for hearing me this morning. I'm here as an independent artist um, and hopefully speaking in some measure for many artists in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, I have never been employed by one of the art centers, um, but I have exhibited in a number of them. And I think I, I wouldn't presume in any manner to, um, to state that I know anything about the administrative uh, properties of running the art centers, the budgets, and so forth, but I'd like to bring an independent voice um, to the committee this morning. I think it's important the function that the art centers serve 
to an independent artist. Um, I've been an artist for 30 years here in the city of Los Angeles. I've completed three public art projects. Um, one of the things unofficially or officially that is known within the art world is that these centers not only run programs for the public, but they also offer opportunities for independent artists to learn how to exhibit professionally. And I think that that's a very important thing that sometimes gets overlooked. Um, when I say that, I mean they offer two things. They allow an independent artist to work outside the profit system, uh, which allows for more experimental work, which is hard to find under normal circumstances. And the other thing is that young artists who are emerging who don't really understand the principles behind exhibiting professionally are given the opportunity to be helped and assisted in a more nurturing environment than the commercial area. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments, Lisa. Sheila. Hi, Sheila Lara Grayware. I've lived in Los Feliz my whole life. Since the Junior Art Center was established as a national model for arts education over 40 years ago, uh, its classes have touched the lives of several generations, including mine and my four children. As executive director of Barnsdall Fojak, I have worked in the trenches for the past five years in children's arts education and have come to appreciate the community building value of art as well as its innate aesthetic import and its particular economic significance in our city. I understand the current financial situation of the city. However, I, most city services are being cut 10% to 30%. It is unfair to demand that these programs be cut 100%. Uh, there is a necessity now for an expedited RFP or RFQ process. Uh, as a founding and continuing member of the Barnsdall Art Park Foundation Board, I know we look forward to working together with the city to, uh, uh, in, a, in a process that is transparent and will reorganize and revitalize Barnsdall Art Park into an effective integrated institution. Um, we have an opportunity now to transform a crisis into an opportunity. Thank you very much, and I hope all of you can stay because what we, uh, when we have the public comment, we're going to hear from the department, and then we're going to come up with some ideas. When we did this with the library department, we came up with some ideas that we still believe could help serve, not at the same level that we like, but it, here, since you're on the ground, I hope you could stick around to give us some of your ideas as well. Okay. Paul. Okay, I've submitted to you for your attention a nine-page report. It is done under the pressure uh, over the weekend. so. There's much more to this. I have a plan. I'm very specific. I, I'm going to ask you to change two instructions. The bottom line first, the instructions I'd like you to change is I'd like you to change the RFP instruction of February 10th to an RFQ. That process will enable any prospective bidders for the In Trouble Art Centers to come up with solutions that are not defined by a department that has a proven record of fiscal irresponsibility in regard to art centers. I don't mean this personally. I've documented it. If you look on page five of the report I've given to you, you will see that on the average, privatized art centers in and around LA City and County run 50% cost, uh, earned income to cost. Barnsdall for the last bunch of years has been running an outrageous seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year. This program can run effectively by the student body BACSAC, the support organization. I have very specific plans. So the second instruction is to instruct the department to use the currently encumbered funds for the spring to keep the program open, to provide only three staff, a senior clerk typist named Kerr Bostic, Laura, who will I retire in June. for that as you get full that. We want to look at this through the hearing. Okay. I appreciate your comments, Okay, Paul. so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even near, but let me, I will for I know, that. You, you went well over a minute. Oh, I'm we so sorry. We started the clock late. Oh, I didn't you know. know. I think because your There's tie, a, the clerk was enthralled with your tie. More. I have no dog in the race. I'm I the founder it. of the foundation. I got it. I got it. I got what you're saying. That's great. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. I'll stick around. Michael Horton, Sarah Feldman. Rudy Barbie. One minute, huh? Okay. 
<laughs> if you need a little more, do it, but paraphrase it. All right. Speak from your heart. I'm going to try. Uh, I'm the head of the uh, Los Angeles Final Cut Pro user group, and this is a group that facilitates the ongoing education of digital movie makers who wish to learn this nonlinear editing application called Final Cut Pro. Now, we meet at the Gallery Theater at Barnesdale Art Park once a month, every month, and have for the last six years. Now, six years ago, we were looking for a meeting space and found the Gallery Theater. And the Gallery Theater was perfect, except it didn't have the necessary equipment for our meeting space. So what we did is we all went out and begged several companies in Los Angeles to help us gather this equipment. So we, we did this, and we installed it into the Gallery Theater. And for the last six years, the community has been able to use this digital equipment. It is, we turned a live performance theater into a digital cinema. And uh, high schools have used it. Uh, uh, artists have used it to screen their movies, um, uh, multimedia groups and city council meetings. You people have been able to use this equipment for the last six years. Now, I've only heard about this closure on Friday. We have like a two-week notice before everything closes down. So what I'm here for, to paraphrase a five-page uh, uh, speech I'm giving here, we need more time. We need solutions. We need creative ideas. But nobody really knows what's going on out there. There's been no transparency. The, for, for all I know, the Barnsdale Art Park could be profitable. Well, I, I don't know how much is draining from the coffers. I don't know anything. So give us more time. Give us three months to put this thing together. We will find a solution. We always do find a solution. There's a will of the people here. There's a lot of people here. So give us some more time to find that God, solution. Well, you, you know what I found out? Friday. I'm disappointed. And that's when too. I found out, too. So that's we, not we enough that time. Disappointment. Michael, thank you for your comments. If you have a copy of that, I'd like to share that. Sarah. Uh, good morning. My name is Sarah Feldman. Uh, you both know me in my professional capacity, but I'm here today as a citizen of Los Angeles, born and raised, and a resident of Highland Park. Uh, uh, as a child, I went to Barnstall. I studied, I learned about photography and etching and film. Uh, I'm not an artist, but I learned to appreciate art in a really visceral way that has served me my entire life. Uh, when my son, who is an artist, reached middle school, uh, he attended Barnstall through Reagan Art Academy, a special program and the only one for middle school students in L.A. And that helped him embark on a lifelong uh, professional artistic journey. For me, for the past four years, I've gone to weaving class at Barnstall, and it's been a tremendous asset for me. While there, I see hundreds of children, about 80% of them children of color, learning about every aspect of art education. If I could just take Keep going. 30 more seconds. Keep going. Hey, Here. ladies and gentlemen, a short let me just, just make this as the chair. We're running a one minute clock. You need a little more. Keep going. Okay. So Thank feel you. comfortable. So as I'm saying, I see hundreds of children there, uh, all, almost all really children of color who come from the east side, Hollywood and the surrounding area. And I see an also extremely diverse group of adults um, the, who are learning and growing artistically. And the Junior Arts Center is the only place I know east of La Cienega where both children and adults can gain art experience and knowledge. It's one of the only affordable places uh, for us to go. And it's an icon of LA. It's been around for so long. When I was a kid, it's over 40 years ago, I regret to say, but it's been used by the population of LA for all that time. And where'd you go to high school? Fairfax. Oh, that's all right. I went to Marshall. So I fine. know. My son went to Marshall, though, okay. for one year. Right. So Good we're job. close. Okay. Um, I can afford to pay more. You know, I can. And, and I would to help keep Barnstall and the Junior Arts Center, I urge you to consider innovative alternatives to slashing and cutting, sliding scales, use of nonprofits. Sir, sir if I may interrupt uh, before the time is over, yeah. do you see a, um, a critical mass of parents? I'm not saying who would pay, but who would be able to contribute either volunteer hours and or supervision absolutely. that would offset some of the economic and fiscal pressures of the center? I do. I absolutely do. I know I would have when my son was there, and I know the parents who are there now would. They clearly value the arts education okay. their kids are getting there that, that's so the, that's much. That's the restructuring and redefinition of these centers need to go through, and that's 
uh, a critical question and, and uh, some soul searching we all have to do. I Thank think you. so. And I think all of the parents and all of the adults who go there um, would be willing to contribute in a lot of different ways. So just to conclude, I urge you to consider um, a lot of the ideas you're no doubt going to hear and already have heard here today, but please don't just close this last bastion of quality, affordable arts education in L.A. Thank you, Sarah, very much. Rudy. Good morning, members of the committee, and to Mr. Wesson in his absence, uh, Mr. Labanja, Mr. Reyes. My name is Rudy Barbie. I'm with the Friends of the Watts Towers Arts Center. Uh, representing today actually three support groups, the Committee for Simon Rodea's Tower and Watts with respect to the towers, the Watts Towers Community Action Council, which during the time during the 60s and 70s and uh, participated in a void of, of providing um, uh, cultural education and awareness to the community for that Watts Towers Arts uh, Centers as well as the campus as a whole. Uh, which is commonly referred to, by the way, as the Cultural Crescent. That's the area geographically between Wilmington and the train station. It c provides that um, that type of a view. Wilmington Avenue. Wilmington Avenue right. and, and 103rd in right. the train station. Thank you very much. Um, presented to you at my request are bags uh, to each of the members of the committee, uh, which are exemplar of the type of work that's been going on at that site. Um, and it's important not that we're any better than anybody else, but it, it has to do with this point. Oh, also, and I wanted to draw your attention to the annual report that's provided by the general uh, manager, Ms. Uh, Garay, and I uh, trust that uh, she, as she articulates those points that you'll uh, uh, take heed to the, the issues that we've been doing there. And I say we because I, I consider myself a volunteer and part of the, the staff that, who also volunteers a lot of hours, which I think were referenced earlier. Um, in 2004, then Council Member Via Gorgosa commended then Mayor Hahn for withdrawing what Mr. Via Gorgosa called an ill conceived. Condemned, not commended. Yeah, well, I didn't finish. Because I, 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 I want to make a point. That. But yeah. no, but he, he commended. He, he commended. Okay. It's my paraphrase. Okay. From the what he considered the withdrawal of what he considered to, to consider right. a, a ill-conceived uh, model that that was my point and 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 it had to do with the removal of the of visitor uh, attacks which I'll just term layman's terms hotel task uh, from the coffers of DCA to fund it so but you as elected officials need to know what happens after those decisions are made staff and the support groups and the independent artists then realize that they need to be on par with tourism and the cultural education and arts community. It can't be us as um, supporters of programs and them as artists and then them as uh, visitors to the city. We're all in the, or, or LA Inc. as a separate entity. So I just want you to know that there was, it may not be as organized, but there was a symbiotic, there was some synergy that actually occurred there from 2004 to now. Um, there was an increase in improving customer relations, enhancing the programmatic aspects of docent engagement with the public, um, uh, and, and an overall uh, raising of the quality of attractions, performance, and, and, and exhibitions. So my, my point is, is, for the last six years, you've had individuals, both in support groups, volunteers, paid staff, really trying to turn this place around. Right. These, okay. So what I've presented to you, and I, and I apologize, we had to sacrifice trees, but it was an ambivalent type of decision to make a point that several hundred children, visitors, international, local, in constituencies, as well as domestic within the country, and that have visited the Watts Towers campus over the recent months and make a plea uh, to the mayor and to the Council of Manic Collective to keep these centers open, to find alternatives for funding and fiscal responsibility, and whatever people have to Excuse do. Me, may we'll I ask you a, a blunt question? I'm sorry, yes, sir. When you refer to tourism and the number of visitors going to these facilities, do you see that as an untapped resource, that if we were to structure a different type of fee program that you could perhaps be opportunistic in generating revenues? given the number of people that do visit? Is that something that is possible? Is that what you're saying? 
I'm sorry if it wasn't clear, but yeah, I am saying that that is on the table as an alternative. I think your, I think the best answer, other than yes, should come from the directors of those respective arts centers to provide you with a suggestive cost based on the clientele that they know that's there and what the market, i.e., their market, will pay. Okay, thank you. And that's not res that's not irrespective of trying to get some private underwriting as well. No, I appreciate the passion. I appreciate the articulation. You were very clear. But I just want to be real blunt. I mean, we just need, this is time about, this is that time. We need to be very clear as to what is real and what isn't. And Thank I will you. tell you, Mr. Reyes, no one, at least in my circles, <laughs> understand that more clearly. Uh, and I'll give you a classic example. Um, we have a drum and jazz festival that's internationally now. And it's also con uh, considered the poor folks um, jazz concert because it's a week prior to the, the, the King Drew Jazz Festival and some of the Long Beach and everything else that goes on. Anyway, my point is is that when the FEMA grant was put in, it was appealed and, and, and for restoration to the towers, there was a pro prohibition to tours. And even though we got visitors, when they arrived, they were upset with the fact that they couldn't go in. And so the docents and staff had to explain that it was in the best interest. Plus, it's just like a liability as far as I do that. Anyway, my point is, revenue went down just from docents, just from tours. So, and, and so the revenue adds to things. You can't advertise our programs when the visitors aren't there. We can't advertise the, the various other exhibitions that are not there. So we, we, we know the value of a dollar. We know the deferred gratification of visitors coming into Watts. We know the gravity of what that means. And so, uh, again, since 2004, there have been a lot of entities working with police, working with uh, gangs, working with everybody else to make sure that they have a quality arts and cultural educational venue with which to come to in southeast Los Angeles. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We're going to have Edward Lander, Claire Knowlton, Ms. Sing uh, Ms. Singer, is that correct? Mr. Singer. Nathan Singer, sorry. And uh, Victoria Gaw, here we go. Okay. Uh, my name is Edward Landler. I am the producer of a feature-length documentary about the Watts Towers, the, the history of the towers. And of course, in making this film and my involvement with the Watts Towers has brought me, I hope, a historical perspective on the arts, as well as specifically the Cultural Affairs Department, and most specifically, with the Watts Towers Arts Center and what goes on around the Watts Towers. Uh, if anything, the towers prove that you don't, the art comes out of each and every one of us as individuals from inner necessity. It doesn't come from uh, having to go to schools. However, art itself it, and the nature of it is a school. It's through the arts, through stories, through all the things that we create that we express our view of what the world is. We learn to understand the world through the arts. Uh, it is central to the functioning of a civil society. The Cultural Affairs Department, uh, going back more than 30 years, going back to when it was the Municipal Arts Department, was a forerunner, set a standard for arts programs, arts education, and festivals throughout the country. For us to cut this here in this city now, would take away the, the, the leadership that Los Angeles once had in showing what, how culture helps form our civil society and brings peace and understanding and a greater uh, sense of education. One last thing I would like to say that uh, I am concerned about, that this is the Arts, Parks, Health, and Aging Committee. Each one of those things deserves its own committee. Is this a reflection of, wow, we're putting them all together because we have nothing for all of these things. Well, it, could this call, is what it, could, it could be called public humanities, and it probably should be, because the three things that affect us all each day is the public safety of the city, the public works of the city, and then the public humanities. But we appreciate, Edward, what you spoke of, and we want to hear from everybody, and passion is real important here. Ideas are what's going to get us to tomorrow. So we're going to open that up in a little and bit we for have ideas. Those ideas. Thank you so much. If I may, yeah. uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, what's been very clear to the elected body of this city 
and when you look at the budget, 70% of the budget goes to sworn officers, police and fire. The balance is 30% of what's left for all of the other departments. And so therein, I believe, is the focal point of the discussion for the next few months. Yes, and, and that's yeah. where the public input comes into play. We would not have to fall back on sworn officers as we do today if we paid more attention I agree with you to the basis. I agree uh, with you completely. I agree with you completely. My name is Claire Knowlton, and I'm the executive director. My name is Claire Knowlton. I'm the executive director of McGroarty Art Center, and we are an example that has made it work. McGroarty was run by the city for over 40 years, and in the mid 90s was privatized um, because of budget cuts. And I would like to speak to what pieces are key to making McGroarty a success when there are half a dozen other partnered centers that have really struggled and floundered. The key is to have professional staff who have the time to create a fundraising program, and that includes fundraising from individual donors as well as foundation grants. And that's not something that you can build in two or three months. It takes a couple years. What we were able to get when McGroarty was privatized and what I'm advocating for all of the groups here is that the city was able to provide some funding. It wasn't a hundred percent of the budget, but it was enough of the budget to be able to hire those professional staff members to provide some sort of security to attract the people who have the skills to put these programs into place. And then over the years, um, the funding reduced. So in our first year, about 70% of our budget came from the city. A few years later, it was only 20%, and today that same contract is less than 5% of our budget. So I would recommend that the city um, not leave these uh, centers with zero dollars, which is sure to make them fail, but give some gap funding until they can build the systems to sustain themselves. Thank you, Claire. Nathan. Yeah. My name is Nathan Singer, and I am the president of the Barnstall Art Center Student Advisory Committee, a nonprofit organization. Um, and I represent 1,500 people who, who, over the course of a year, use the Barnstall Art Center. Uh, again, uh, I, I, we, I, I would uh, uh, second her message in that. What we need is time to deal with an RFQ or RFP and deal straightforward and honestly with the city in this issue and allow us the time to put together our funding and get people in place. There are major, major companies in the industry, the, um, the, the uh, uh, Blick Art Center, the Blick Art bus Businesses, Windsor Newton, Grumbacher, and so forth, who, who might come in to uh, help us out with grants. Now, just give us the time, keep us open and running with the time to to make make these connections. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Singer. Uh, a hat. This is, uh, I'm sure this is going to show up in about 50 years on Antiques Roadshow and be very valuable. Very good. <laughs> Enjoy. Very good. All right, Victoria. Victoria Ga. No, no, you're not the last. Anna Wiener, Nyla Oslanian. Go, go. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm an LA independent artist. A few years ago, I worked very hard to help you to save Hollywood from recession. You are currently working very hard to save the Hollywood sign. We wouldn't need the Hollywood sign if we didn't have artists in Hollywood to, you know, for the creative force of LA and the United States for that matter. Um, anyway, I'm just asking that you work even just a little, give a little bit of that passion that you're giving to saving the Hollywood sign to get to, to help save Barnstall Art Park. It's been there for 64 years. I mean, isn't there some sort of a histor historical preservation that you could do, like how you save historical monuments 
that maybe you could implement to save Since you directed it personally to me, I absolutely, along with Mr. Reyes, want to fight real hard for you. <laughs> We also want to hear from the department to try to change some of the processes that may allow it to go on. Other departments have come before us. We found out what the problems. No one's immune to the economic crisis. And, and art is real important to everybody, as I expressed earlier. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to fight to buy open space because that's one thing that will be there forever and ever and ever on that same time. Thank you, Victoria, very I much. I understand that, but I, I really, we really need you to help fight to save these art programs as well. You've got to hear from your councilman of the district, who's a great fighter. You are uh, a councilman. Uh, well, thank you. No, but Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Garcetti's going to, deputy's going to speak. I'm going to fight with you. We're going to fight all the time, but we're going to fight and win. All right, here we go. Do it. I know here we you go. Can do it. Thank you very much. You know you can do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> My name is Aviva Weiner. Yeah. I was born in Los Angeles also. Uh, educated in public schools, went to UCLA, Cal State Northridge, but I became an artist at Barnstall Art Center. I never learned as much art in any elementary school, junior high, high school, university as I learned at that center. It's a special environment. It's hard to explain. People come together of all ages and the, the group learning experience and the art ethic there is unsurpassed. I got a master's degree at Cal State Northridge. It was just paperwork. I already had learned everything at Barnstall Art Classes. I have worked there as a volunteer. I've been on the BACSAC board, I think, about 20 years. I also volunteer through the library rehab programs. I do a lot of volunteer work. A lot of people in this city do a lot of volunteer work. When we couldn't be in our regular building because of retrofitting and had to find another place, Backsack rented a church. We found ways to do this. All the parents there of the Junior Art Center programs and the adult programs will come together and find a solution. I've been working with that community for 30 years. I know the parents will do it. But as was said many times by many people, we need time. We can't be told in two days, you need right. to restructure. That's all we need. I know it can be done, but we do need time. Thank you very much. Nyla. Nyla Arslanian, president of the Hollywood Arts Council and co-president of the Barnstall Art Park Foundation. Um, we, the Hollywood Arts Council has participated at Barnstall for 25 years when we brought one of the first private and public partnerships to the park and created the Children's Festival of the Arts, which this year is in its 25th year. We had to move it to another site due to the restructuring, but it continues to this day. A lot of our programs with the Arts Council are successful because of private and public uh, partnerships, and I'm really pleased to be working with the Barnstall Art Park Foundation to find solutions. We've seen over the years some dysfunctioning with regard to the department, I mean to the uh, to Barnsdall, some of it having to do with systemic problems that uh, the Cultural Affairs Department had to deal with or was unable to deal with. As we look at this crisis that we're in right now, we're looking at finding the solutions. We do ask for time. We'd like to see it be an RFQ process where uh, interested parties can form coalitions and come forward to really provide a workable, sustainable solution to and maintain Barnesall Art Park to its greatness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarah Tara. Uh, Mark Dreyer, is that correct? Thank you. The Road Theater. <laughs> Dr. Maureen Kelton Taylor. Good morning. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm okay. I'll wait for the rest of my party. Hi. Good morning. I'm Suzanne Tara, and I am a homeowner in Toluca Lake, and I am a uh, theater professional. Uh, I represent the Road Theater Company at the Historic Lancashire Arts Center in North Hollywood. Uh, the Road is the primary uh, resident of that company, and uh, the Lancashire Arts Center is responsible for not only the activities of the Road Theater Company and its subscribers uh, contributing to the businesses in the area, but also for 12 subcontracted groups in that space. Uh, we allow a forum for um, uh, for seniors to come and uh, do storytelling, uh, for dance classes for children with disabilities, 
Uh, we have uh, programming for, chil- for uh, at-risk youth, and uh, we are uh, one of the most uh, successful and burgeoning of all of the arts centers. So uh, we've been existing now since uh, the end of the year on a month-by-month extension to our contract, and uh, we very much uh, would like to uh, ensure moving forward that the Road Theater Company has a home and that its subcontracted groups can continue to exist from that space as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Taylor. Morning. Good morning, Councilman, staff, and my fellow advocates. Mm-hmm. My name is Maureen Callan Taylor. I'm the CEO of a partner of the Road Theater called Engage. We serve 2,500 seniors in Los Angeles and Orange counties. Our goal is to keep them living independently. Um, it's because of partners like the Road Theater that we become, have become nationally recognized. And I'd like to tell you about some of the impacts of the work. The fiscal impact is that we keep 25% of the seniors we serve out of higher level levels of cares, and that saves $18 million. Um, there's also the health impact. Research has shown that seniors involved in intensive arts programs um, see their doctors less, use less medication, and have better health. There's also the, um, the cultural aspect. Um, the stories that the road theater actors help our seniors to tell well um, teach their, their history of, of the country, of the town. They smash stereotypes. Shall I continue? Sure. Yeah. They inspire, they provide perspective, and they also um, keep us involved in the time on a tradition of passing experience from generation to generation. We know this is a very tough decision but um, we support you in all your efforts to help keep these art centers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, my name is Mark Dorr. Um, I'm a member of the Road Theater Company along with a couple of other theater companies in town. I live down in Angelino Heights, so it's good to see you again. Um, uh, I'm an actor. Uh, I work in film and television, but my, um, my soul is in theater. I'm a graduate of the Juilliard School, so I lived in New York for a number of years. Um, on a large scale, one can look at the theater community in Los Angeles as very disparate. Um, I was at a th- when I got the call that this was going, this meeting was going on. I was actually in a a, a conference where they were talking about uh, a, a new study that's being done um, on ticket buying habits of theater goers, and a. a, a, a the largest, the, now the largest database of, the, of single buyer, single ticket buyers in the country is here in Los Angeles after, with only 20 small theater companies, including the Road Theater. Um, it beats Philadelphia, which has been doing this for about three years, which only has 1.75 million. Um, on a small scale, the perception of the arts and uh, at least for theater, I can't speak to the, the visual or the fine arts, but at least for the theater, as, as we all know, I, I'm, doing a th- I'm doing a play right now where the, the, the director and the playwright has decided that he really wants to take it to New York. And we've gotten great reviews, it's really going well, and we say, well, why do you want to take it to New York? He said, because it's New York. Um, I think that speaks just to a bias against theater in Los Angeles, and I think that shutting down, basically by, by uh, going on the month-to-month RFPs that we are at the road, you would be effectively shutting down a 19-year-old uh, uh, organization that has been serving the youth, that has been serving the elderly, that has been serving um, a population, and, and we're trying to grow that population of, of teens, grow a population that needs to be served, that wants to be heard, and needs to have their voice, uh, uh, I'll say it again, heard. I got it. Yeah. We want to hear everybody yeah, yeah. today. Time. So I guess that's what we're so really looking for. Thank you. What Thank was your you. name again? Suzanne Terra. Suzanne Terra. I got that right. Okay, good. We're okay, Ms. Schechter. Call that person up right now. You're next. Okay, good. Cheryl Johnson. Cheryl Williams and Taylor Gilbert. Okay. Good morning. I'm Cheryl Johnson, president, co-president of the Barnesdale Art Park Foundation. We have three requests of the city as they approach restructuring at Barnesdale. Number one, we ask that the city consider including all DCA park functions into a single RFP or RFQ. The city losses through DCA operations 
uh, in the park exceed a million dollars, and we think with benefits and payroll taxes they exceed 1.3 million. Of that amount, only 60 percent is represented by art instruction in the theater. Um, and we think that these losses also uh, result in part from the many bureaucracies that are established in the park that also deter advancing the overall interest of the park. We think by ending the park's balkanization by having a singular RFP for the operation of the entire park, the city can increase, can, can shrink those, its losses by another 40 percent in the park, and it also has an unprecedented opportunity to bring a singular vision and leadership. This is something that the master plan for the park identified as being critical for the park to achieve its potential as a world-class facility. We also would ask that the city um, expedite the RFP process. Barnsdale is one of the city's costliest cultural facilities and also its most important. Um, there are many templates and models that are available that the city can use to advance the privatization and there um, should be all due haste given to uh, minimize the disruption in classes and services. And finally, we ask that the city le recognize its legal obligation to operate Barnesdale as an art park. As Ms. Knowlton so vividly testified, the city must recognize that we will, by privatization, be able to eliminate some of the losses, and in fact, the majority of the losses at the park, but not all of them, and that some subsidy is necessary. As Tom well knows, we're busy building a huge new sign for the park. We don't want it to be a tombstone. We want it to be a beacon for change. Very good, Ms. Johnson. Very good. <laughs> I'm actually Arvis Jones. You have a card there for me, but Cheryl Williams wants me to use her time, too. Um, I come in a little different. You're Cheryl Williams? No, I'm Arvis Jones. She's, I'm using her time and mine. She had me come up in her place. Well, you, could, you, she, you, 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 don't, you can't trade time, but you can use as much time as you need. Okay, got it. Cheryl doesn't want to come up got at it. all. Got it. Okay, good. You're good. Um, Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> so I'm Arvis Jones. I'm the assistant director of the Center for Grief and Loss for children, youth, and teens. Um, I remember the two of you when about a month ago you offered a $75,000 reward for my son's killers. He was 39, staying on the porch, smoking a cigarette because his wife was eight months pregnant, and someone came along, thought he was someone else, and shot him. I have been doing this work in grief and loss long before that. I'm also a music therapist. I'm the Western Region Director of the National Association of Negro Musicians, and I'm a part of the Watts Gang Task Force also. But I come to you representing the William Grant Still Arts Center. And I think when I speak, I speak for what everyone is saying here. Other people can do the statistics. I just got word about this. But I work in anti-gang work. I work with all sorts of of uh, adults, but one of the things, the city attorney has funded a program that I do in nine middle schools, a grief and loss program. We found that unresolved loss issues creates a lot of anger. One thing I have been able to do is utilize a lot of these centers, the Watts uh, Towers, and especially the Williams Grant Still Center, to turn our youth towards them. I have had students that, I had a student that was ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. They offer music lessons at the center. She was able, she liked piano so much when I was teaching it that she was able to improve her grades. She is now in her third year of college. I've had students that if you ask their name, I had a development delayed student, if you ask his name, he couldn't tell you. If you sung to him and ask his name, he could sing back that his name was David. There's another thing. Uh, my program has been an anti-gang program. It was based on police statistics of gang involvement. Two of the schools that I do grief and loss programs are five minutes away from the William Grant Still Center, Cochrane Middle School in Audubon. And when I take these kids to the center, they've seen the um, doll exhibit and, I mean, just so many things. They are so surprised that there's something like that so close to their community because they think that we don't care. I work with gang members. I work with some of the West Side, West Boulevard Crips, which is in that area. They also have a respect for the center. And one of the things that I'm trying to get our youth to understand is that we do care about you. It is really a, a shame that our youth 
don't have any experiences. I took a group of kids from Watts to the David Geffen Theater, and some of you know about Bebe's kids. One of the, some of the kids saw the wishing well fountain there, and all he could say was, look, there's money in there. He didn't even know what a wishing well was about. All of our centers are especially, we talk about at-risk youth, but I work with these children day in, day out. Um, it's a place, the William Grant Still Center is a place where they can just show up. We have music lessons, we have art exhibits, and it changes the brain waves of our children. There have been statistics showing that if, and I know someone said that they're the only place east of Los Angeles. That's not so. We're east of La Brea. These kids are so surprised. You know, we have things downtown, but this is a place where their parents can take them, they can walk. They've never had this experience. If we close these centers, especially if we close them right now before we have a time to get anything together, yeah. you can bet you that your crime statistics are going to go up. Yeah, we have a question for Mr. Reyes. I, I want to pose this question, too. I've posed it before. Um, when we're dealing with uh, difficult areas where you have parents working two jobs and you have the, the pressure of poverty that you do feel in pockets like the ones you're speaking of, um, even that uh, environment uh, creates doubt in terms of will the parents step up? Will the parents volunteer more? Uh, I, I cover Pico Union and Westlake. I cover some of the toughest neighborhoods in the city as well. Um, but being able to structure uh, an approach to allow parents to participate, would that be realistic in a center like the one you just I think so because the, pro the thing that, that we don't recognize is in other communities, Parents are aware of how much the culture and the arts help their children. So when you get centers like ours that are open and parents' eyes are open and they see their children improving, they see their grades improving, they see they can be someplace where they know they are after school, they are helping now. When they heard about this closing, they were like a gas. There's other organizations such as I was getting ready to try to get the National Association of Musicians, we're a scholarship organization to partner with uh, the William Grant Still Center to help them with offering their lessons. So yes, the community, but you've got to remember, if these places weren't in the community, some of those lower economic parents, who are good parents, wouldn't even know they existed. This is right. some of their first um, uh, forays into the arts and the culture, because all they think about sometimes is working, feeding their children, and when they see that this is available, to them, they would step up to the plate. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, and sorry for your loss of your son. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak this afternoon or this morning. <laughs> it feels like this afternoon. Um, I'm a programmer, not a public speaker. For the record, state your name. My name is Taylor Gilbert. I'm with the Lancashire Arts Center and specifically the Road Theater Company. Um, I, I would just like to mention that the Lancashire Arts Center does. Um, a myriad of programming from youth at risk to seniors. We have visual arts programming as well as theatrical programming. And instead of going over all the things that we do, I would like to read a letter from a local playwright um, that is aware that we, at this point in time, have no security as in regard to a lease or space for the next 12 months, which deters us, of course, from going after all the people that help us. All of the donors that are there to want to give us money, in good faith, we can't ask them for money unless we know that we're going to be in a space. Um, all the subscribers that we have, we can't send out any kind of uh, programming to them to ask them to come and participate without knowing that we're going to be in a space. So we're sort of cut off at the knees at this point, and I know with your help we will we'll secure uh, the, the area and the space that we need. But I would like to read this letter specific, specifically from one of the Los Angeles playwrights. The Road Theater Company at the Lancashire Arts Center occupies a unique niche in the artistic scene of Southern California. No other company produces so many high-quality new plays. The road is where plays are born, including four of mine, and he lists them. None of these award-winning productions would have happened without the Road Theater Company at the Lancashire Arts Center. Their intimate space at the 
Arts Center is the perfect size for premiering new work and connecting deeply with a passionate local audience, not only Valley folks, but folks from all over California. It has thought, it, thoughtful and adventurous theater goers. Art, artists flock to the road and the Lancashire Art Centers as well. Actors, directors, writers, designers of Southern California hold this theater scene in high regard because we know we'll always get a good produ production with integrity and outstanding attention to artistic detail. It is a wonderful place to work and a fantastic group of people. In turbulent times like these, live theater and visual arts give the most immediate artistic expression to citizens' concerns. TV and film get around to it eventually, but a theater like the Lancashire Arts Center's Road gets there first with timely depictions of local and national anxiety. The Lancashire Arts Center helps make Los Angeles bigger than it is, better than it is. Los Angeles is known for demolishing its architectural treasures. Let's not destroy the cultural treasure that is the Lancashire Arts Center and the Road Theater Company. Please find time to find a way to extend the Road's lease beyond its upcoming expiration in, I believe, 45 days. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank all of you very much. Nancy, rush on, Nancy. Edgar and Edgar, uh, help me with your last name from the Watts House Project. Carson. Sorry, Edgar, appreciate that. Ken Carlson. Begin. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Rossov, um, speaking for the Watts Towers Art Center. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the city and DCA for bringing down the axe because I'm beginning to see firsthand how Watts responds when they're challenged. They're coming together. We have over 500 letters already signed to the mayor. There's a petition. I mean, this is a community that has been at risk. It has been challenged repeatedly, and it will not go quietly. And I'm very proud to be a very small cog in that. But I think to some degree, we're losing sight of the children and at-risk youth here. This isn't about art. I'm an artist. I've been an artist all my life. Whether I have a job or not, whether I make my movies, that's not what's relevant. What's relevant is the self-esteem and the self-respect that 6,000 young people every year get when they come to the Watts Towers Art Center, whether they take a paintbrush, whether they walk through our gallery and say, is that a painting? Did someone actually make that? Whether they hear our director say, you have to say hello when you come in. Something as simple as that. I would remind the city, it costs a great deal to handle gang violence, crime, and the marginalization of our communities. We will pay a far bigger fiscal price. Forget the moral, forget the ethical. There is a fiscal price if these young people do not have a place to go. I would also remind everyone what everyone knows. Once a program is canceled, it is a lot harder to start it again than if we manage If we somehow manage to keep our programs going for the next few months until we can come up with some of these solutions, everyone understands that our city is in fiscal jeopardy, our country, the globe, is in fiscal jeopardy. But we need time. I know that's been said before. But again, once we tell these kids there's nowhere to go, they'll find somewhere. And it won't be anywhere as positive as Barnsdale, as the Watts Art Center. We have to find a way to keep our art instructors employed so that we can continue our programs. The small, really relatively tiny budgets that we have for art supplies. Good job, better. Nancy. Appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Uh, hello. Um, uh, hello. Um, my name is Edgar Arsenault, and I'm director of the Watts House Project, which um, is a collaboration between artists and architects working with the families directly across the street from the Watts Towers to transform their homes inside and outside, front yard and backyard. Um, I want to say thank you to the, to the council members for allowing me to speak, and also I wanted to say thank you to Ms. Arthas for personalizing 
um, what this really means to to kids and to individuals, um, what the uh, what the Watts, Watts Towers Art Center can offer. Um, I'm here today to speak as an advocate for the neighbors who often aren't heard, um, and also an advocate for the neighborhood. Um, I'm the director of the Watts of, of the uh, Watts House Project, but I'm also an artist, and I've exhibited around the world from New York City to Berlin, Cologne, Amsterdam, Paris, Dusseldorf. Um, to Los Angeles, and in none of those cities have I ever encountered an art center that possesses the unique qualities that the, that the Watts Towers Art Center does. Um, it is a platform for artists and musicians, and it really is the anchor for an arts neighborhood that's existed for more than 80, more than 80 years. The life of the Watts Towers, the life of the Watts Towers Art Center. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a repository for history, for artists who have operated in that neighborhood for decades, for generations of artists that have operated in that neighborhood for decades, but it's also an economic engine too where it brings tourists who come there to spend their dollars. Um, as important, and to the point of Miss Arthas, is that it offers 24-hour security to a neighborhood, which if you ask any resident on that block, is one of the main reasons why they stay there. And the neighborhood has possessed a gang-neutral um, environment for so many years. And to put the Watchtowers Art Center at stake is to affect not only their programming, but to affect the security of that neighborhood as a whole. Um, I mean, this, this place has been, this has been a place where families on that block have had schooling there for generations. Their kids, their parents have all participated on some level there, and it's a very, very special place. And in its inception, this was an art center which was created by the people for the people, and it was given as a gift to the city to take care of and to maintain. And this gift now needs to be reassessed. Its value needs to be reassessed, because if you put that at risk, there's 80 years of tradition which will be lost, which will be de-anchored. We need you guys to save the Watchtowers Art Center. Edgar, thank you very much. Hi, my name is uh, Ken Carlson. I'm on the board of directors of Artist Community for Change Los Angeles. We're a nonprofit organization that basically takes um, artists of all different disciplines, visual artists, dancers, musicians, and we try to use our talents to um, promote positive social change. And we conduct about two or three performances a year at the Barnes Dog Gallery Theater. Um, and it was really, um, the facility is, is completely unique and, and it's perfect for what we try to do. It's, uh, you know, it has the right number of seats, it's affordable for a new upstart nonprofit organization. And it also has, thanks to the um, LA Final Cut Users Group, uh, a whole digital media projection system, which really allows us to um, combine the visual arts with dance performance and music, which, which is really unique um, for a facility uh, of that size. And I definitely, you know, would urge everyone um, on the council to, to please do what they can to support the Barnes Doll. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate that. I'm going to have, I'm going to hear all these cards right now, but I think we should hear from the department right now to try to find some solutions as we go through this uh, program this morning. So I'm going to uh, keep the public hearing open, but I'm going to lay it aside. We've had 21 public speakers. We have about 21 here, and hopefully get some ideas. If I got to ask the general manager of the department, and the assistant general manager, and the CAO to sit uh, at the chairs right there. They don't want to close anything. There's no question about that. So we have to think of creative solutions. And I've heard some ideas absolutely above and beyond the real passion of life and how important these centers are to all people. And uh, so here could we go to right now. This is Olga Garay, who is the general manager for cultural affairs. Could Good morning. You, uh, um, first, I want to thank the committee, and I want to thank um, all of the Department of Cultural Affairs staff who um, have been absolutely um, present and accounted for and who it's so palpable how much they care about the work that they do and um, how much they care about the communities that they're in. I also want to thank everybody in the audience. Obviously, um, these centers are of extreme importance to so many people in Los Angeles. And it is um, 
you know, a very sad day that we're here to talk about um, reducing the commitment, uh, financial commitment, and uh, human resources commitment to these centers. Um, if I could give you this exhibit here, because the funding is the key, and I know the CAO's office is here, certain things apply to the uh, issue of the governance. There's about 40 departments in the city. I'm looking over you, Olga. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who lives in Los Angeles, you pay for 100% of about 99% of everything it costs to go with the, B the Bureau of Sanitation through a sewer service charge, through a collection charge. You pay for that service. Other departments, though, get their money from general funds. The fire department is general fund, except for the inspection area there. The police department is almost all general fund. Uh, that is our challenge right now. But uh, in the wisdom, and uh, if we all recall the name of Joel Wax, who was a very fine councilman uh, from uh, our city, uh, the TOT, which is the Transit Occupancy Tax, which is not general fund money, but taxes that we collect from those who visit our hotels, helps fund it. And Ms. Schechter, you do have a copy of this. If you could just pass it out. This is our basis that we're going to try to look on here as we go to this fight. That there's a certain uh, establishment that we're starting with. This is for you. And if you could explain this to everybody as you see it and tell us what challenge you are, because we don't see the tax that is collected at a, I'm speaking for Mr. Reyes now, we don't see the taxes that are collected at the hotel under the transit occupancy taxes as general fund taxes. We say them specifically to go to the yard. So this is our first. And we have to establish where our money comes from. So, Olga, you. if you could look at that. This is prepared by the CAO. Thank you. Um, the administrative officer. My understanding is that this, the city of Los Angeles collects 14% on every dollar that is spent at a hotel in, within the city limits. Of that 14%, the Department of Cultural Affairs receives 1%, which typically is the 9 to $10 million range. That's our operating budget. After about $5 million or so have already been taken away from that figure to cover um, pension and human resources and the cost of our facilities, maintenance, water, all of that. Um, from that 9 to $10 million annual budget, that is our core budget. And from there, staff salaries are paid. Uh, our, the grants program is... Um, is um, generated, so we give about 260 grants to arts organizations a year. And then the cost of running these facilities, art centers, theaters, historic sites, et cetera, also comes from that amount. And most um, of the people here are from f facilities. Is that correct right here? Yeah. Is anybody just uh, not from a, f from a center? Uh, okay, so we'll talk that. All right, we got that view. Thank you. Okay. So as you know, about maybe six weeks ago, there was a um, recommendation or a motion that was entertained by the city council that recommended that the TOT no longer be um, directed towards arts and uh, culture programming. And in my opinion, that would have effectively yeah. shut down the department. That decision or that recommendation was not accepted by city council unanimously uh, because it would have meant the death of not only of the entire department, but all of our the grants that we make to community-based groups and individual artists, it would have ma meant that um, all of our facilities would have closed. Everything would have gone away if that money had gone away. Um, with your help, we were successful in, in retaining those funds for art and cultural programming. What we're here talking about, and I thank you for that because I think that that was one battle that was that was won with the help of um, Arts for LA and the arts community. The battle that we're dealing with now it was a second salvo, which was to say, well, if we're not going to um, have the the will to take away the money that you use to fund uh, grants and, and programs as well as salaries, then we're going to have to take money from somewhere. And so the decision was to 
try to partner out um, a number of our art centers and theaters in order for the staffing of the department to be minimized. So obviously, if we're able to find um, nonprofit arts organizations in the community that can come in and run and manage and program these facilities, then the department's need for hiring those individuals that currently um, function in that capacity would go away, and so we would be able to shrink our workforce. And that's exactly what we were directed to do um, as part of this, um, you know, shrinking of the overall city's um, um, staffing. Um, and a week ago Friday, uh, we received uh, a notification from the CAO's office as to exactly who the 15 individuals from the department who work, uh, for personnel, excuse me, not. But who, who selected that? We worked with the CAO's office and personnel and the mayor's office to say if these centers are going to be partnered out, then these are the individuals who work at those centers who then ostensibly, if they don't have seniority and bumping rights, would no longer be required because other people and other organizations would be managing these centers. Now the department is on record as saying as many people in the audience, in my opinion, have correctly said, that's not something that's done overnight. Finding a viable community-based arts partner that can come in and run a center responsibly and with the capitalization that is needed to make them still support their communities is something that we cannot turn around in a short period of time. So Director Garay, may I interrupt you there? Sure. When you speak of people being asked, well, for the management to consider X personnel to leave, are the resources there in the budget to allow them to stay for no. the duration of the year? No, not the way that, that uh, we have been negotiating the budget. First of all, there is, um, there was 700, immediately, we were, we well, were well, under. Let me put it this way. By not having the personnel, can management still continue what no. programs exist? No, we cannot. So one equates with the other. Correct. So we had thought that any personnel would have to leave, affected by these um, partnering out um, strategies, would have to leave come July 1st. A week ago Friday, we were, um, we were sent an, um, a memo from the personnel department um, directing us to immediately start the layoff process. Well, can we ask you another question? When that directive came from the mayor's office, were the council office notified of that directive and of the impact of that directive? I don't have the answer to that. That's important for me to know. Uh, yeah. Council Member uh, Saul Romo, the Assistant General Manager for the Department of Cultural Affairs. To the extent possible, we made efforts to notify the council offices upon our immediate notification of who the actual names were that corresponded to the positions, because then we had a better under, we actually had an understanding then of what the council offices, what council offices would be impacted. Um, to, but we, we reached did, out to we council made those. We made those. I'm, I thought you were asking, were you notified by the powers that be? Right. We we personally, as a department, contacted every council member in whose district one of these centers resides. So we took that overture. I don't know if at the same time the the mayor's office or personnel or anybody contacted you all as a body. I don't have the answer to that. Here, here's the thing, what we want to do. We want to try to find a way to be creative, to not try to recreate something a year from now. We don't want to all of a sudden have a, uh, a, an abandoned house, forgive the term, and then you have to bring it back to code in order to occupy it again. 
So how many people, let's just see this, how many people work for cultural affairs? Right now? Right. Um, at this, during this fiscal year, we have authority for 68 people. We have authority for 70 positions, regular re and substitute authorities. And how many people have they notified you that you have to displace? 15, 15. Pe people are being displaced through the layoff process currently, but however, there are 10 people who are taking early retirement that we cannot replace, and we have eight vacancies. Of those 70 positions that we have authority for, there are eight vacancies that we cannot so fill. So you'll be down to 50? We're going to be down less Actually, than 50. Actually, more to 37, because we have the 70 positions. We've got 10 who are leaving under early retirement. We have the eight vacancies and then the 15 people that will have been slated for layoff. So, so we're being cut by almost 50%. Right, I understand that, but why are you being cut by that m amount when you already have 18 going out the door either by their own choice or by vacancies? This is what was given to, actually they wanted to have us lay off 30 people. Originally when we were contacted, uh, we were told we had to lay off 30 people. I protested that very um, forcibly and um, the mayor's office interceded and, and cut that to 15 people, but originally it was 30 people. And so, you know, we're Who's left? Who's left? Because here's the thing, if I have a problem, I gotta deal with it. I wanna keep you operating in communities, Mr. Reyes does. We wanna keep the grant program going, because that, that's almost independent of a structure that gives artists Correct. money to go, but is the grant program Correct. been stopped? No, the grant program is being affected, um, but <laughs> not, through ERIP, but not because of the layoffs. So we're trying to sustain the grants program as much as possible, but they're losing two people out of a staff of four because of ERIP. Uh, we have the public art program, which, you know, as you know, we also get 1% of all public and private construction, and that's about a $19 million portfolio this year. It's a huge program for us. Um, so that's that's being maintained. Um, we also did any of that nineteen million go to operate these centers? No, no. Why it's not? all for public art. I know, but why not? Because it's legally. I understand that, but Madam City Attorney, Madam CAO, if we have, and this is nineteen million dollars is important. It was one percent of the art. So you build a new building, and one percent of the three hundred eighty-five million dollars, the Parker Center has to go to art. Correct. Okay. Right now we're 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 closing our. Our art hospitals, our art hospitals. This is the lifeblood of the artist. The hospitals are being closed. Is there a way for the council in this crisis, because we're in a crisis, to bridge it by taking the 19 million that you have sitting there? Because you have 19 million dollars in the treasury sitting there. Well, the the trouble is that that 19 million comes with restrictions. Some of it comes from. I know, but it's was it by ordinance or is it by vote of the people? Both. You have. Tell us what is by vote of the people. The people didn't vote for one. Well, you have the council the, did. Some of the some of the funding is for the one percent for the pub, public works improvement, art projects, which for every time we have a capital construction in the city, a percentage of that capital construction has to be dedicated toward, toward arts. So if you have, let's say, a, fire, fire, a new firehouse or a new police station and you're building an art component in there, it's not an art component that can be migrated over to an art center. So no, no, but it's by ordinance. I'm just saying you're building a new fire station at Hollywood and Van Ness, and you got like a, uh, a, a billboard, it's, which is an artist's work, mm -hmm. but it's a message board going up. It's an artist's work. I don't want to... Uh, tarnish that but I would rather take the money that went for that art Council up there member, down the street to Hollywood but well, here's the tough question though for the CAO and, the, and if we if we're the looking city, for you need to involve the city attorney in in this since I got here in 2007 I have been talking to the city attorney's office and the CAO saying is there a way that we could take a portion of the percent for public art and use it more strategically so that we can do just what you're saying put people in center so that they Got can it. here's the question though if there's 19 million dollars how much is being cut right now for the 15 people who are at these centers that people came down how many how much dollar is that well now? these that 19 million dollar portfolio goes toward the public art component no no how many people who uh, got pink slips pardon the expression and and be laid off how many how much dollar is that amount about two hundred seventy thousand dollars two hundred seventy thousand dollars so total Just a salary. 15 for every for 15 people 
for the savings for the remainder of this fiscal year. No, no, yeah, no. I know, but we got to. We're, we're all working together. This is what you call ideal building here. I don't know the annual cost. I'd have to get back. Got to it. Well, let's just say Sounds it's like two million dollars. <laughs> let's just let's just say it's two million dollars. It's not. Okay. It's about five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Let's go with that. Five hundred thousand for fifteen sir, the, people. The full year savings on the fifteen positions is approximately six hundred thousand. Yeah. Six. Okay. So we're we're getting in there. All right. So six hundred thousand. And uh, who uh, is there? Any math majors in the house? <laughs> okay, Paul. What is uh, six hundred thousand into fifteen million? Nineteen million. So basically, what I'm saying. Say it again. Three and a third percent. If there is a three, now we come back with if a time of a crisis, we could go because I don't think anybody wants to change the one percent of the art. Because when you do build buildings, whether it's a commercial center or a, a city building, it does add to the art. There's a component that's very important, Mr. Chair. But yeah. I think I, I hear where you're going. But uh -huh. I think one of the uh, pivotal points is to address the city attorney and looking at. What portion of that ordinance keeps us from being able to tap into what sources have been referred to capital projects to do exactly what we need, which is to fulfill this gap in our personnel costs? Now, we define policy, not the city attorney, I've said that a hundred times. Where in the ordinance can we revisit to introduce language that allows us to get to that point. I would appreciate that because I've been working on this, like I said, okay. since I got here. But, I would very much But, but Director Gray, are you familiar enough with the ordinance or anyone in your staff mm -hmm. that allows us to put in an amendment that gives us that option so that we do not break the law if it is based on something <laughs> other than a policy directive that the council has established. And that's, and that's a critical point, I mean, in terms of how we pivot from one place to another. Now, is anyone here from the city attorney's office that might yeah, we have feel city, comfortable we have to address it? Good morning, Bosch Jankowski from the city attorney's office. Um, I think there's two programs we're discussing here. One is the private developer percent for our program. Right. There was an extensive nexus study done on that uh, ordinance, and that earmarks art for commercial industrial buildings to be directly uh, only spent on art. That can okay, but who established that? Nexus. Well, there's state law, the Mitigation Fee Act requires a nexus on the impact of that type of building versus the fee that's being collected, and that fee is for art, so that can't be spent on anything else. The other program we have is the Public Works Improvement okay. art, project. art Project. And there's no, I'm sorry, on that first part. Who interprets how art is conducted? The ordinance, is, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, and I'm sorry for that. So but that the ordinance itself has a description. Okay. Now, isn't it possible to amend that definition to include the creation of art in a nearby center? In a nearby center? And or a geographic nexus. Uh, not clear on that. My understanding is no, but we'd be happy to look into okay. that. So that's a possibility. No, as I'm saying, my understanding so, so far it, has been no, but I'd be happy to okay, look but into based that. Based on interpretation, we could find an author and or someone to help us at the state level create those changes. And that will take time, but at least we know what is available to us and what isn't. That's a possibility. Okay. But, but now, Bundy, you're going to go to the second part now. The public works? Yes. Yes. That program, uh, my understanding is, is a 1% uh, earmark for art done in city buildings. Therefore, with that money, that ordinance have, would need to be changed. We could look into changing that with the way the city money is spent. Okay. So that is a policy directive that we could revisit 
to look at this gap? I believe so. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on, Tom. Eight votes. Okay. You got so here. can you spell out exactly what section of the ordinance that we would need to amend? Oh, I'd be happy to get that to you. I don't have it with me. I'm okay. sorry, but I don't know if Saul has the public works. Okay. Uh, Olga, could we, Ordinance. with the yeah. city attorney and our offices together, put together the directive in a motion so that we could at least begin plugging up that gap yes. as soon as possible? Right. I think the respective ordinances you're talking about are section 19.85 of the LA Administrative Code and section 91.107 of the LA Municipal Code. Okay, so citing those sections, if we can put together the verbiage that allows us to shift at least to the extent that it addresses this gap until we be much clearer as to, okay, how does this impact our landscape, if you will, uh, based on these changes. Yeah, again, the public works program, uh, my understanding is each department, when it funds the construction of buildings, earmarks the 1%. I'm not sure what kind of authority the council has over that particular money. I don't know if the- Well, here, here's what we're saying. But I'm just saying yeah. that ordinance would be uh, a lot easier to look at than the private developer. Right, but given this sense of priority, let's go with the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. and let's go with the section that we could change internally. Right. And then yeah, the second it. step, we can look at if it's a state amendment, mm -hmm. we'll pursue that. If not, we can follow another path. What, uh, what the committee has done in the past is had these kind of sessions, and this is why it's good to have these sessions, because you get ideas from the people, and you get and discussions from the department to say maybe this is an opportunity. What this committee will do is have a recommendation that will be written by the legislative analyst office to go forward to council with saying if we want to, the city council, make sure these centers uh, from the harbor, from San Pedro, through Watts, all the way to the east side, to the west side, to the Sunland Tahunga area, etc., in the valley, be remained open. Here's a potential. Uh, funding source that we could alter that at this time now uh, and and have some con uh, sunset in it when times get better which we hope they do then it reverts back but it makes no sense to close art facilities uh, when we're we're going the other way and I would also say too on the on the one thing with this with the uh, it's not the Quimby Quimby is a state law that affects parks right. that's but correct. The, but the but there's no state law that affects the art that I know of so we could look at them both and then we need I'm just saying everybody if they have to get onto their day we need you again in full council hearing because what our charge is is to come to council when miss this Wednesday so we got a lot of work to do well, 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 let, let me do this I'm sorry this yeah, yeah, can I, I do this uh, right I'd like to do a verbal motion, verbal motion. directed to CLA to prepare a motion, a directive that identifies the proper sections in the current ordinance that gives us the option to move resources for art centers with the objective of creating this uh, resource base for this gap that currently exists. And then we can sunset that in, in a year. Maybe 24 months. Just as they say 24 the months. 24 to be months. fair if we do RFPs. And, and would you yeah. second that? I'd second. Okay. Sure, Ed. Okay, so yeah. if we can move that. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. But, 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 but let's make sure uh, it goes through its, it'll go through its process. So, I mean, I don't want to raise your hopes, but let's get it. We still need the eight votes. Okay, this is we a motion. We can make sure it's legal. But yeah, we're going to make sure it's legal. So we're going to go through those steps first. So, so again, that's the way very clear. We're going to make that directive, push that in, in that direction. But we still need eight votes. We have to make sure it's legal. But that's a motion that will that will come that's from terrific. this discussion. That's wonderful. But that uh, gives us as little sum. No. no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have. I'll be right back in 15 minutes. Okay. okay? <laughs> I just want to say that. Mr. That's Reyes a long has term. a set meeting that he'll uh, go downstairs. Be back. We'll continue the meeting as well. Ms. Garay, you can continue. I just want to just make sure that everybody understands that this is a long-term solution that hopefully will um, 
will turn out to be successful, but our immediate concern, which is what a lot of people here are concerned about, is that we do not, the Department of Cultural Affairs currently does not have the money in place to pay part-time instructors or pay the, the people that are being laid off. That we were, um, $700,000 of, of salary dollars were taken from our department about six weeks ago during the last FSR process. By who? Who was it taken by? Well, the CAO, I guess. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, the, the, the money um, it was from our salary accounts, and right. it was predicated on E-RIPs and the fact that there was going to be layoffs and the fact uh, well, Let's that get back to some things there on this no. issue here. In the, all right, so let's, there's a big picture that we're going to look at yeah. right there. The immediate picture right now, you have these facilities that you've canceled. And again, I'm just finding this mm -hmm. out like Friday. I'm a pretty accessible guy, so I right. wish I heard this a little earlier. What are you doing on the opportunity to try to keep the keep the keep the shop open with the centers open with what limited staff you can and i use the term a co-op an artist co-op or some other type of facility and someone from mcgrody are they still here right there you expressed that too which maybe what could be done how much do we subsidize barnsdall right now barnsdall i was just looking at um the budget and it's over a million dollars a year to, for all of the Barnstall, um, you know, that includes salaries, includes part-time salaries, it includes um, the, uh, you know, materials. Are art. the fees similar to what are in New York City, Boston, San Francisco, San Diego, and other art-run centers? Most cities that I'm familiar, big cities that I'm familiar with do not run uh, th this kind of a portfolio of art centers and theaters. So to try to This compare, is unique to Los Angeles. It's not unique to Los Angeles, but it's not a common practice out there. So trying to get benchmarks from other cities is a difficult, it's sort of not going to... But if I'm an art people. teacher and I want to teach at Barnstall, mm -hmm. I go and I have uh, 32 positions open to teach. Mm -hmm. And I figure out this is what it costs me. What... What is right. the 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 um, fees that we collect at our art centers and some of art centers like Watts doesn't collect fees for example, right. they do not anywhere near cover the cost of doing business. It's very expensive to to do business. Uh, here's and the uh, here's the thing here. This is the fire department. Uh huh. All right. Does anybody have how much a little engine cost a year? No. Anybody have any idea? Okay, a million and a half dollars. So I don't think a little art center is a million and a half dollars. So we can find it out. You'll be back. Uh, we're going to have the CAO verify that. What we also asked, too, and uh, this is important. Now, anybody go to the Central Library? Believe it or not, on Sundays, is that true? Where's Lisa Schechter there? Or, uh, Mr. Cornwell, you're a, a, a library man right there. What do you think it costs to run a, re a local branch in a month, Mr. Cornwell? What do you think it costs... For a, a weekly cost of a local branch, what do you think it is? No, for a week in a local branch, a local branch is forty thousand dollars. So they're expensive facilities. Are your art centers forty thousand dollars? They're not. Okay, so here's what we need too. This is the plan, and this is why we wanted to meet. Mm -hmm. You got to tell us, and you got to list all your centers, and you got to say this is what it costs. We have that. We okay, can get we don't that have to you it this here. afternoon. I know, but we got to have it here, and we got to be able to decide this because we're coming to council. The fi budget and finance committee of the city council has been very stern with all of us in saying we have a problem, which we all agree. But we have to, to try to win, Absolutely. and win is, is some way of trying to uh, resolve these issues. We've got to know what the costs are. And as you mentioned, uh, as the public speakers mentioned, some mentioned the grants from uh, foundations to be aggressive in that area. Someone from Los Feliz who went to, uh, uh, lived in Mr. Reyes' district, went to Fairfax High, she mentioned she'd pay more for Barnesdall. Uh, if it meant paying more for Barnesdall. And I think that's something that we should look at. I think there needs to be equity across the city because mm -hmm. not everybody could afford everything. But at the same time, let's not close these places. I agree, but we don't have... No, no, you've got to be very creative. That's what we have to do and find ideas. 
That's the thing that we got to do. So hold on, Paul. Hold on. I want to give you an opportunity to look at this. This is why we've been trying to get together to, because with the other departments, we've been successful. We will find out we're going to be able to uh, do some things if we move certain things around how we operate and what it is. So this is some of the challenges. Our, but our challenges are our options are very limited, and our resources are much more limited than the libraries and recreation and parks. I got it, but we've got to be creative. The most creative people in the world are artists, right? Huh? Right? Olga? They absolutely are. Okay. All right. So if you want to uh, be creative in our right. accounting, we will um, start um, putting this in. Well, uh, just to be serious, right. I'm really concerned about, you know, a lot of people took a lot of time to come here and express their feelings, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of that. And I just want to be honest about the fact that we just do not have right now staff payroll to pay people to stay in their, in, in their positions till facilities can be partnered out, if they're going to be partnered out. When we submitted our FY 10-11 budget in December, we said very clearly, we need at least a six-month window be, beginning July 1st, the new fiscal year, to do this responsibly. We also said, as, as the um, executive director of the McGrady, McGrady Art Center said, they cannot bear the brunt of all of the security costs, all of the electricity, all of the um, maintenance, which is, we put all of that and we factored all of that in into the budget that we proposed to the city of Los Angeles. Those recommendations were not accepted. So we're very interested in making these successful partnerships. I think that some of the centers will be able to be partnered out successfully, and you saw a number of people in, in, in this um, chambers that said they want to step up to the plate. I don't think all of the centers are going to be able to, to be partnered successfully, and you saw some of our staff members saying, give us a chance to do it. It's the same thing that's happening in the school system here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, there's charter schools that want to get in there. There are um, teachers Teachers groups. There are. There's a mayor's <coughs> partnership. There's different um, entities and there's different configurations of people that want to make this happen and, and sustain these centers. But it cannot be done overnight. And all we're saying to you is, if the current conditions persist, we don't have the staff salaries to pay these people to maintain any kind of modicum of activity there while we're out there trying to build these well, partners. We're trying to work on that too. Angela Mota is here, a, a deputy for Mr. Garcetti, who's a champion for our uh, uh, Barnstall Park. If you want to speak from over there for that's the yeah. process. And also with us today is Martha, uh, the district director. I want to say it correctly, Martha. Segura. Segura, thank you so much. Yeah, vacate for a moment. Thank you, Olga. And we just um, wanted to speak briefly about uh, addressing specifically the Barnsdall Art Center. Um, as you know, the council member, Eric Garcetti, took classes up there. It's one of his favorite places, and Barnsdall Art Park is in the center of East Hollywood, which is a thriving arts community. Um, one of the items that we've been, I don't know if there's some confusion in the information but we on, on Friday we were surprised to find out that the programs were going to be shut down for the spring um, session and we got a hold of cultural affairs and got some information and the programs at Barnstall are apparently being shut down because there are three teachers who are taking advantage of the early retirement program and as we all know, that's taking a toll on a lot of the departments. And now we're actually seeing it in something that constituents directly depend on. So our question is, and our hope is, that cultural affairs will be able to continue those programs until those individuals retire in, I believe it's the end of June. Um, so while the program is supposed to go longer than June, uh, the council member would like to see an abbreviated class. Um, so it would take place for a couple of months rather than the full session, but at least there'd be something there um, in the meantime for these students who depend on these classes in the spring. So that's something that we've proposed to the Cultural Affairs Department, and we're hoping that they will be able to take advantage of that. Um, 
these closures of these classes were not a part of the layoffs, um, so we were not notified of the closure of these these programs. Right. Marta Segura, District Director for CD13. And the other thing that we'd like to emphasize is that uh, the council president for Council District 13 is proactively looking for public-private partnerships for the sustainability of this facility along with his colleagues, I'm sure. But uh, definitely we, we are uh, part of this uh, process to ensure that the RFP or RFQ does get put out there in a timely manner and that we continue to look for the public-private partnerships that will make this uh, facility more sustainable. And I don't know how to emphasize enough that we were informed by Cultural Affairs on Friday that the funds for this spring have been encumbered and they do exist, so we do expect that the classes can take place this spring, even if it's in an abbreviated fashion. Well, on Wednesday, we're in council, and I'm sure the President of the Council will be asking those questions directly and uh, all parties will be there at this time to cut it further. Thank you both very much for your support and care for Barnstall. Council. I, I, I could add a little bit of information to that. Uh -huh. what, this department is suffering the consequences of the overall problem with the economic downturn as well as the specific actions that the legislative, uh, you know, the city leadership has taken to try and mitigate the impact. We implemented an ERIP, an ERIP program. We're losing staff to the ERIP program that's directly impacting the centers. We're laying people off because... What, what, just because just, uh, I want to do this here, early retirement incentive program takes employees who would want to get off the general fund and go to the retirement fund. So they're trying to lower the cost of government to try to get through this period. Right. And it didn't have any, uh, they didn't pick where there was an oversupply, they just, who was eligible. And then they checked their eligibility and made them approved to be removed right. on retirement. When are the employees scheduled to leave? The, well, that's one of the ambiguous pro situations. We don't know. So, okay, um, so that goes to Mr. Garcetti's well, point. We well, we just found out on Friday because of the, um, Gar Mr. Garcetti's office that two of the employees at Barnstall would be laid off on June 5th. They found out on our behalf because uh -huh. we had been asking. I talked to somebody in your office. Yes. It was June 30th, I believe. She said June 5th. Whatever June 5th. it is, June 30th. But but that's that. Whatever. But we have we have to put this problem within a context of all of DCA's promises. That our our instructor ranks have been decimated because of the layoff and because of the early retirement center program. Let me just ask a technical question: Your instructors are city employees. Correct. Yes. Let me just ask another. And I love city employees. Okay, but at the same time, if we have this challenge, can we have a caretaker of the facility and some method where you hire? Uh, independent artists to help further the cost so it lessens the burden on the general fund. If we had if we had the money to do that, yes, but we don't have money from the 1070 account, which as you know is our part-time account. That Those monies are... That was the 700000 Yeah. Correct. But I got that. No, 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 no. That 700000 was our full-time salaries. When was the last time you we had, had a 700... Right? We were projecting a $700,000 salary surplus in our full-time salaries account. That you were going to roll over. And that was on the expectation that all of the employees who had filed for the early retirement program would leave in March. We did not have any of those individuals depart in March. We're having some leave in April, and we're going to have some leave apparently in June. As a result of that, we are now projecting a $100,000 deficit through the end of the year. We have to communicate back to the CAO asking them, of the 700000 you swept away, we need some of that back to meet payroll right. for full-time salaries through the year. In addition to that, our part-time salary accounts are now uh, nearing a very near dangerous situation. We do not have enough money in our part-time salary accounts, nor will we be receiving any more money to make part-time payroll through the end of the fiscal year, which means in, essentially we have to shut down any part-time salary payroll. Under normal circumstances, what the department would do is we would take any surpluses from our full-time salary accounts and from any of our other expense accounts that support the art centers to mitigate the deficit. The mayor and the controller took action recently to freeze all the spending and to freeze any account transfers. So we have no way to mitigate any of the deficits in the part-time salaries. 
That is what prompted our decision to suspend spring classes. In addition, now Canoga Park Youth Arts Center has lost its full-time instructor. They may lose its, its part-time funding for, its, for their part-time instruction. The Sun Valley Youth Arts Center has lost its art instructor. They may lose their funding for their part-time salaries. The Watts Towers Art Center and the Charles Mingus Youth Art Center lost its full-time art instructor, and their part-time salaries are also in jeopardy. So while we may still have a, a, a cadre of instructors at, momentarily at the Barnesville Art Center, we still have other art facilities that are left without instruction. And those are Prop K funded facilities, so there's a legal obligation that the city has in order to try and maintain those operations. So, and I, I tell but you, you got to figure it out. That's right, we have you to figure it out. You know, you've got to figure it out. And we have to figure it out quickly because you we've know. been giving instructions to lay people off, to suspend free, you know, to suspend expenditures within a, a matter of the past couple of weeks. So, we we we're, we're operating with, um, with with having to comply with instructions and with resources quickly diminishing. It's a mess. Well, I got that, but we got to figure it out. We got to figure it out, Olga. I mean, it's a mess. No, I understand that, that but, but, but we're we're looking at this holistically. We have a number of centers that are bleeding, okay. And so, what we're trying to say is, it's triage time, okay. So, if we're going to, if if three of our centers, uh, 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 Sun Valley, Canoga Park, and Watts all lost their primary full-time instructor, okay? We have two people at the Barnesville Art Center who are going to be retiring momentarily. We don't have the money to hire part-time people currently. Now, if today or tomorrow or Wednesday or whenever it is, in the council's good wisdom, you're, we are told, hey, this cannot happen. Here are the dollars that you need to mitigate this situation because we understand what's happening. We would fall on our knees and, and bend over backwards to keep these centers alive. We want to keep these centers alive. It, some of this stuff is not within our control. You know, we almost didn't make payroll last payroll. For a full-time staff. For a full-time staff. And we had a seven hundred thousand dollar <throat> overage. So, Madam CEO wants to speak. Yes, I, I feel I need to. Jackie Vern, <laughs> Jacqueline Vernon Wagner with the CAO's office. There are probably about four or five points that I wanted to clarify, sure. but the. Um, first one I'm going to touch on has to do with the salary surplus for Department of Cultural Affairs. Department of Cultural Affairs is one of seven um, departments out of a total of 40 that you mentioned before that was not, um, did not uh, share in that shared sacrifice item. So therefore there were no cuts to their department unlike all of the other departments. Um, the surpluses that were projected were a result of uh, work furloughs, anticipated work furloughs, and other savings. Um, the council took action to transfer that projected year in sur surplus towards mitigating the city's overall budget deficit. That's a done deal. If the council wishes to restore that money, um, you know that that's definitely a right. But that was an action that was made in concert with the mid-year, the CAO. When they swept all the cuts. yes, yes. Um, Another point I wanted to touch on was um, that you had hearings. I heard testimonials from Lancashire Art Center and from McGordy Art Center. These are two of the 11 art centers and museums slash theaters that are already partnered out. Uh, Department of Cultural Affairs has approximately reports having approximately 33 art centers, junior art centers, theaters, museum sites, historical sites. 11 of these are already partnered out. This next round of looking to go into public-private uh, public -private partnerships was the next tier. Um, yes, the department did recommend uh, about five facilities, and we looked at the opportunities that were there. Councilwoman uh, Janice Hahn, um, you know, thought it was an exciting idea and, and suggested a CD15. Either way, um, and then I hear Council District 13 saying that they're very excited about the public-private partnerships and that they're committed to doing this. So it's not that we, we already have these types of partnerships, and it is looking to, yes, the private community to step up. And so um, the testimonials from Lancashire and McGordy, those are two of our art centers that are already contracted out, and I think that what they were saying was that they wanted an opportunity to be able to continue in that way. So that's the one thing that we have to look at. And I also think council may make that decision, Olga, that as we see how it plays. 
on this issue here. What I think would be helpful for everybody, I'm sorry, Jackie, did you have um, As far as the, the last point I'm going to touch on has to do with the layoffs. Yes, Department of Cultural Affairs had a very high target. Um, uh, however, the mayor's office worked directly with the department and they reconfigured the list of positions that were identified for layoff and that list was provided to me after they had worked on it. So that was not something, uh, orig the original list that was on the thousand in the CAO's report, yes, we worked together um, with the department and that was primarily positions identified as being associated with the art centers that were to be partnered out. However, um, you know, as I mentioned before, the department did work closely and directly with the mayor's office in reconfiguring that list of positions. And so that's my last point. Okay, so we got all that, but all of this is happening rapidly. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to council on Wednesday. We're going to look at the big picture item to see if the council would find a way if it's legal. The, can I just say one more yeah. thing, please? I talked to uh, Mr. Garcetti's office and they asked us to be a council on Wednesday. On, I explained on Wednesday we have a community meeting in Watts with many of the people who are here that has, we have been trying to set up for a number of weeks. And so we're trying to work with Mr. Garcetti's office to see if we can offer what time our testimony at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'd rather not have to change that. If at all possible, could we see council at 12:30 and beyond we're well I don't know what I would do is I would try to move the meeting up a little bit because this has been overdue in our efforts to try to work with your department to try to get this done so you have a a very you important say move the Watts meeting to earlier no at 9 30 if you could at nine and try to conclude it at 11 if it is or or suspend the meeting and come back after council council is going to focus on this issue no, no, I, been, I, I yeah. just want you to know that our yeah, reality... We working, I know we're working with your office, so this is news yeah. to me. I didn't know that there was... They, spot, I, we just found out um, from, your, from the council that this was going to be on the Wednesday committee. On, I understand that for the yeah. city clerk's office, but as far as finding out, we've been trying to do this for a long time. Here's a question here. It's been canceled? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, thank They're you very just canceling it right now. Well, that's official thank action. You. But I want you to come to, I want to welcome you to come to our meeting in City Hall on Wednesday. Oh, good job. Good job. You'll be there. Good job. Okay, so that makes sense. So that's Okay, all. well, thank, thank you, you Janine. Okay. 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 Now. So the bottom line is we want to join forces with our community and our staff members to try to make this as least hurtful as possible for right. everybody involved. But we will need the intervention of the city council. We do need some real um, dollars and cents to try to, you know, provide this, this segue so that we can give the time that everybody's asking for to make this as, as less hurtful as possible for the communities. Okay, I want to return back to the public comment uh, on this here, just a moment here. But also, afterwards, I'd like to have a casual conversation of anybody with any ideas that they may have to try to go forward on this issue here. Uh, this uh, a young lady with her daughter who's been so good. You, is your card in here? Yeah. Come on up first. You're coming up first. Forgive me. Just tell me here, and I'll pull your name out. Does anyone have a an appointment soon that they have to go to come fill the chairs right there and tell me your name. Thank you for being so patient. You're welcome. You're next. You're next. Um, my name is Wilma Frazier, and um, myself, my daughter, and this young man, we are the community. We live in Watts, 2419 East 115th Street. 322 East 108th Street. So we are the community. We are using the facilities at Watts Arts Tower. Um, and myself, I'm a parent. I cannot afford what the Watts Towers is providing for my child. Uh, she has had the opportunity just because of Watts Towers and the staff. And I have to say that they are an extension of our family. Miss Kai, Miss Cooks, Rogelio, um, they are an extension. They're uncles, aunts to my daughter. Uh, they are um, 
to Christian. They have been examples to him. Um, if it had not been for the watchtowers, my daughter would not have had the opportunity to sit with the master pianist. Uh, she would not have had the opportunity to sit and discuss with a director of uh, Kung Fu Panda. The towers have brought that into our community, not only for my child, but for other children. And um, to privatize it, I think, would be a travesty. I, I really do. I really think that if there's somewhere else, I, and I'm not all familiar with the laws and money, but I know there's money somewhere that could be taken to continue to run this the way that it has been run. Thank you very much. Um, um, and I wanted to say, if we don't stand for something uh, at the community, our, our children are going to fall. I got that. Thank you very much. And I'd like to ask if you'd like to testify. <laughs> All right. Please introduce yourself. My name is Lauren Hansom. I am a student at the West Learning Center Charter School. And I'm also a student at the West Towers Art Center. And I would like to say... Please keep this center open because it's, it is a positive place for students to stay. And it, if it wasn't for the West Towers Art Center, I would not be able to learn how to play the piano or be um, exposed to many different things that are positive things. And we Thank want you. Rogelio back. Thank you. Good job. Hi. Um, I'm Christian Allers, and I grew up going to the Watts Towers. I've been going there since I was about 10 years old, 22 years old now. And it's had a definitely um, positive, it's, it's had, it's had positive, to, it's been positive to my development. And it seems surreal that we're actually considering shutting down these centers. And, Incredible, and especially in a time when when schools are are shutting, are closing down their their art programs, and we're closing down these programs now. My God. Thank you, Christian, very much for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> would we vacate those seats, and the next three would want to come up, and then just state your name, and we went back to public comment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Zoe Bright Howard. I'm a professional actress. I'm a theater director and a teacher of musical theater and drama at Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. In my professional capacity, I have performed in eight shows in the West End of London. And I've been resident director for the last seven years for Foothill Summer Theater in Lock and Yarda, a program that's been going for 27 years and which has just been shut down due to lack of funding. When Anissa Hamden heard that FST was closing, she asked, me if I could create the same program for five weeks this summer at the Barnsdale with the hope of expanding and continuing on at weekends with classes and workshops so that our youth would have a safe place to come and be creative and explore the joys of theatre and the arts. The Barnsdale is a gem of a theatre. I've worked in it several times as an actress and a director. Our students get the opportunity of working in this wonderful professional space with state-of-the-art technology, with a caring professional crew and a leader whose energy skills and knowledge make Anissa Hamden a powerhouse. Her enthusiasm for the arts touches all of us who know her and to lose her would be a very sad day. I'm an arts board member in Glendale and we discuss how we keep the arts alive. They're systematically being cut out of many curriculums and if we lose the ability to teach and inspire our students with drama and the arts, then we'll see a new generation of kids who are socially inept. Many spend most of their times on computers and blackberries playing violent games and uh, writing text messages that in no way resemble grammar. And at least at the moment, there's still places like the Barnsdale where we can gather together for social entertainment and interaction. Thank I'm you. Okay. If you could finish that up. Um, I was, the, the Barnsdale's a professional theater in a safe, beautiful setting. It's proved to be a great educational tool for many. It has a caring, intelligent, and wildly enthusiastic woman at its helm. And personally speaking, I think it would be a great tragedy if we let this treasure go. Thank you very much. If you could introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Nadine Witt. I'm here in support of a long-term lease for the operating organization at the Lancashire Arts Center. 
I've been traveling to Los Angeles for years to participate in the events that are held at the Lancashire Art Center. I was introduced to this center by the Road Theater Company and have been privileged to see almost every production in the years that they have been programming in North Hollywood. Fortunately, I was here this weekend to view the recent gallery exhibition and see the closing performance of the latest theatrical production at the center. In conversation, with some of the audience members and as well as road volunteers, I was informed that the center may lose its funding and that the organization that has programmed the center successfully for years may lose their home. I am here to tell you that the other side of the Hill Productions, more commonly known as the Road Theater Company, has successfully integrated many terrific opportunities for generations across the board at the Lancashire Arts Center. Over the years, I have been continually impressed with the youth, art, and theater classes that they provide, especially the dance classes for disabled youth, the fine arts and play presentations, and the exceptional opportunities for the mature adults such as myself. As well, we're well, going to take that into the record for the city clerk, if we can, because we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to hear. Okay. Support Lancashire Center, support the group that's in there now. That's your main message. What is that? Support Lancashire Art Center, support the organization that is handling that now. And a, and a long-term lease for the, the uh, theater so that they can make their plans in the future yes. for subs subscriptions. Thank you very much. You give that to the clerk. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Tammy Robinson, and I'm here in support of the William Grant Still Center. <laughs> William Grant Still Center is a wonderful place, and uh, I'm not only here to represent them, but my daughter also uh, attends there. And so, and I also, uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Ray's actually asked would parents uh, take place and volunteer, and I think that's wonderful, and yes, we do. Thank you. All right, and I thought that was a wonderful question. So part of what I wanted to say today was what will our legacy be? That was what I was thinking when I needed to come and write. I said, so do we want our legacy to be one that entails closing centers, vital to the needs of the community, or do we want our legacy to be that we took a chance when it seemed that uh, there was no more hope? I humbly appreciate the task that you have at hand. As I'm an educator, I'm actually the chairman of the English ESL department at Los Angeles City College. Wow. And I come here, uh, again, as a patron and as a parent of a child who uses the services of William Grant Still Center. It is a place where children of all races can come and be a part of something that gives them a greater vision of who they are as citizens and as young people uh, and uh, who they are in the world. The mission of the William Grant Still Center is an instrument. It, 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 it is a, every, an instrument in, every, in, every in the hands of every child. And that instrument can be their voice to sing. It can be a keyboard, a clarinet, a violin, their body uh, to utilize in yoga classes and dance classes and other forms of self-expression. Uh, this past weekend, the exhibit at the center uh, was the legendary Th 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 uh, Thelonious Monk. And in an age of rap music, I believe that it is wonderful for our children to be exposed to the original American art form of jazz and its pioneers. Uh, the center, uh, in the summer, the center has a program, a summer program that, again, my daughter also participates in, where they actually perform uh, for about two hours to over 500 people at the Nate Holden Community Arts Center. And, um, and the students did a show called Love and Vision, and where they learned about uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Princess Diana, and Martin Luther King. So again, we are here today to, to ask for a 90-day minimum a moratorium on the closure of the William Grant Still Center right. so that they can be given an opportunity to look for grants. I just want to say as a parent of three teenagers and a 21 year old and three of them are really into music I appreciate what you're saying and thank you for your volunteerism. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And Tammy I want to say go Cubs I want to City College. Okay please do say hi to your president for me Dr. Moore. Okay, name please. Hi, my name is Marshall Louie and I'm a member of the Barnesville Art Park Foundation and the uh, PR and Community Outreach Chair and also a resident of Los Feliz. And thank you for uh, all your attention to this issue today. Um, not only has Barnesville been an institution for a long time as we've heard a lot about, it's also um, 
just starting to find traction again uh, since its closure in the 2000s. So I just wanted to make the point that the idea of stopping programming or, um, or kind of cutting off the, the momentum at this point would be a problem um, because it takes a long time, as you spoke in your comments, to get things going at that point. The Barnesall Art Park Foundation for the last uh, year has uh, revived Barnesall Arts Sundays, uh, which, which uh, echoes the Sunday open Sundays that used to happen in the uh, 70s and 80s before the park closed, um, and uh, as well as um, wine tastings and movie nights that have brought thousands of new people to the park. Uh, we were getting six, 700 people a week over last summer, and we heard a lot of people who had never been there before. And a lot of the two words that we heard a lot of were undiscovered and potential. And, um, you know, I, as some of my colleagues from the Barnes Art Park Foundation have said, I think there really is a chance here to find an opportunity in this crisis. And from your, your, your comments, uh, it sounds like you see the same thing. And uh, I would really just encourage you to help us uh, bring the RFP and the RFQ process along as expeditiously as possible. Um, because if it sounds like a public-private partnership is the way it's going, uh, it's one thing that you guys weren't able to speak about, and, uh, and I would love to hear more about that. And also, we're here to help facilitate that process as much as we possibly can. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joy Foyer, and I'm an independent artist and, and native of this fantastic city, and a lover of the fine oasis uh, atop the hill called Barnstall Park. And I just wanted to, to say today that it's, uh, first of all, thanks for the art intervention. It's felt kind of... Um, a bit more positive than than uh, is my mindset um, heading here, only stemming from the sort of abrupt and unceremonious um, decisions that have seemed to come down and sort of blindsided a lot of the people that practice art and, and love these centers. So I just want to reiterate um, whatever we can do, uh, you know, as a practicing artist in the community, that place is a place where we collaborate, where we come up with new ideas, we spawn off and try to really create um, a creative soul for this city and each other and um, I think there's a huge untapped resource in just asking the people who practice art and and perpetuate the arts to help and uh, I was a bit distressed I will say about the fact that all of the um, options had not been exhausted in, in reviewing the ordinances and, and, and different ways that we could possibly go around this so but I'm encouraged by by what's come up today and Again, cannot say enough about Barnstall and really every art center and everybody who's here today protecting what they love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. My name is Roberta Morris. I'm a deacon with the American Catholic Church at Hollywood Lutheran, which is the way where Barnstall was housed in the period when after the earthquake, the activities were there. I'm also on the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council, and therefore I'm aware that there's no other children's park within that whole district. 33,000 people and no other children's public facility, um, which I, I can't believe, but it seems to be the case. Uh, I'm also, um, my colleague at um, Hollywood Lutheran is on the uh, Griffith Park Neighborhood Council, and I don't, don't, I think if I didn't do mud therapy at Barnstall, I would have known about this closure. I only heard about it because I'm on their mailing list as someone who does the um, ceramics there. Hmm. I can't. I think it's, it's essential that your, your language of arts hospital and yours as arts intervention gets out to the community so people know that this is happening. I am so sure we could raise the funds and the public support if we, people knew that this was so close to closure when there's I'm considerably less money involved than so many other things that we pay for willingly. I think the public outreach is essential right now. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you all. Okay, the next three, please. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Lois Hunter, and I direct the theater program at the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. But I have worked at uh, Washington High School and Manual Arts High School, so I'm a strong advocate for the Watts Tower because I've sent students there, and of course, the William uh, Grant Steel. Um, I'm here to advocate for the Barnes Doll Theater. The Los Angeles County 
the school, the children that go to the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts come from the whole county of Los Angeles, and mostly, 90%, come from the city of Los Angeles. So what's been happening with the Barnes Doll for the last five or six years is it's been a training center, literally, for our theater and music and dance students. We don't have our own facility at the high school. So we have used the Barnes Doll Gallery Theater to train our young people. So they have worked on the lights, they've worked on sets, costumes and all of that stuff under the auspices of the professional people that work at the Barnes Doll. We could not have done it without them. So when I heard that this was going to be closed, I was the most panic mode. And today of all days, because it's my birthday and I've been teaching for 40 Happy years, birthday. advocating for teenagers and young people to, to be able to be engaged in the arts. So uh, it's very apropos that I'm here today. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I do want to say, however, um, uh, Councilman Reyes, you did ask a question on Give us some ideas about revenue. How do we keep this going? Well, I'll tell you, as a parent myself and been a teacher for 40 years, the only constant stream of revenue are the parents. I don't care if parents have money or don't have volunteerism. They're always, for some reason, these children keep coming. They don't stop coming, and with them come parents. And I think that a, a resource that we really do need to tap into with these centers, because you can hear the passion and the emotion in this room, are those parents. Even if parents don't know and cannot afford, they can give their time to those centers, and I have seen it happen. And our parents at the High School for the Arts, that's exactly what they do. And I know they'll roll up their sleeves to make sure that their children get a quality education, and quality means the arts. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, Lord. <laughs> Lord, let me get you officially uh, on behalf of Mr. Reyes and I. Let's have a big happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lois. Lois, happy birthday to you. That was great, Tom. I want a new rule. Anybody who has a birthday uh, speaks first. I'm sorry, Lois, to keep you here. But that shows your dedication. Give her another hand of love right there. Thank you very much. And gets a kiss from Tom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Agreed. <laughs> All right, here we go. My name is Howard Marshall. I'm an art instructor at Barnesdale Park, as well as the Watts Art Center. Uh, but I'm speaking on a personal note today. I'm a product from Barnesdale Park. I'm a 54-year-old man. I started there in 1967, and I continued through high school. Working in a studio with professional artists as a youngster, you learn the discipline, you learn how to be creative, you learn to think for yourself. And it is so important, and especially today, when our young people are not being taught to think for themselves, and it's not that they're not creative, they're just close to what society wants them to become. The Watts Towers, all, Barnes Doll, all the other art centers are so important, because if young people don't have this, they will turn to violence. I, did not, I wasn't a part of violence. I came from a generation where I was told what I was going to become. And so there I followed suit. But a lot of young people don't have that direction. And so it's for us as art instructors to give them that direction. And it's also on a spiritual note because when the young people are in there, I am charged to do positive or negative, And I choose to do positive with them because they're going to be citizens once they walk outside that studio. And they have to be able to be creative in life and to be able to function. So we give them the same values that their parents give them. But we're doing, we're doing it through the visual. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very sir. much, Alfred. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Vahe Shahinyan. Um, I, I am the founder of a local company called itsmyseat.com where we provide ticketing and box office services to a lot of community uh, organizers and uh, extensively including Marsdahl Gallery Theater where we've been working with them since 2006. And when I heard the news on Friday, my jaw dropped also. And I just want to stress the business effects of what we're doing. Yes, laying off some people may save immediate money, but that's just, it's not saving. It's just shifting the problem somewhere else on local vendors such as me, where I'm employing on average two to four people monthly to support the services. So basically, you're just shifting it on me, which I have to let them go where they can spend the money in the city. So it's not a solution, it's just a shift. So I don't want to see this at hand purpose. It's not a solution at all. And also there's uh, current uh, contracts at the Barzan Gallery the <clears throat> Theater that I know of until end of the year that our organizers are organizing their concerts, 
So I'm not sure what's, how that's going to be handled. There could be legal cases, as far as I know, from the organizer's side. If they can't depend on the venue while they're marketing it. How many companies like, mm -hmm. like the one you, you are representing exist? Do you know? What was the question? How many companies like the one you represent exist? Well, local ticketing company, I don't know of, except Ticketmaster. We're local. We can compete with Ticketmaster. We are a full box office service. We're born in LA. And Barnesdale was one of our starting grounds. So I don't know how many ticketing services. The uh, reason why I ask is maybe that's something we should research to figure out. Absolutely. I have there's a mutual relationship. You don't exist, then we don't exist. Absolutely. So where's the reciprocation? And that, that would be the question we should be asking. Yeah, and I, I have, think. as far as uh, support, we have, I have a ton of ideas of my own where we could make the theaters more lucrative so more people rent it as opposed to going to private uh, entities to rent for rental. So there's a lot of ideas that I have. Good ideas. Yes. Thank you. We're going to thank you very much. You could have the next three guests and just state your name. Thanks for helping us out on Wednesday. I get a minute, huh? And counsel, I get two. I'm getting better at this. You getting got, better at good. this. You're this good. is very scary for me. Okay. Okay. My name is Janine Watkins. Um, my family has been in Watts since 1921. Um, what I'd like to advocate for is for you to look at all of the letters that have come from the community. Um, advocating for the Watts Towers. We will be in council on Wednesday. People cannot afford $20 to come here, so we are here to represent. The Watts Towers Art Center is designated as a historic national California monument. We are different from the art centers. Even though we stand in solidarity to the art centers, we ask that you take us off this list. We were already underfunded and understaffed, and we have historically been underfunded and understaffed. And what we are asking is that it's time to talk to our representatives, the mayor's office, DCA, and hopefully our councilwoman, to talk about the uniqueness of our facility and how we can continue to work on development because we want to develop cultural tourism. We have the facility, we have the infrastructure. A half a million people from around the world come on the street. I have a house, 1784. It is on 107th Street. I'm the one at the end of the street where all the traffic turns around. That's the reason why I'm here. And the other reason why I'm here, because if our children cannot go to our, our only public art institute, they're going to Linwood Jail. They are going to the Linwood Jail. Everybody knows those statistics. They're scientifically done by UCLA, USC. I'm asking you to get your budgets together. I'm asking you to remove us off the list. We are asking for equity here. We're asking for time. We're asking you to know that if you continue to rush this thing without pulling us together at the table to, to, to take part in what we know living down there, you're sending our kids to jail. It's going to be a hot summer, and it doesn't have to be. You need to calculate your human capital. We can raise the money we need, but we don't want to be private because you're, you, the Watts Towers Art Center is the only public art institute in our area, and our people cannot afford to go out to art institutes. We're not going to LA Live because we can barely afford to eat. Unfortunately, that's the way it is, and that's the way it's been done historically. Watts is asking to be brought to the table with full disclosure, with transparency. We're only asking to finally be brought to the table historically and for these decisions to stop being made behind closed doors, and we don't want to be retaliated against. We're catching heat because we object to more concrete in the skateboard park. We object to be having the cultural crescent rush with more concrete. We are asking to, to allow our brain trust to sit at the table. I pay taxes on five different properties. I want my money to be at the table. I want my co-residents to be at the table. We are asking Los Angeles to finally historically allow Watts to be at the table. Full Thank disclosure. And I'm advocating for all our centers across the community, but we're forced to triple advocate for ourselves. We're going to count on the council office to help give us some guidance on this here. Thank well, you. if we can talk to the council office and Miriam Long. Hi, Miriam. Uh, if we can oh, be Miriam's included, not here. Miriam's, Miriam's not, not here. here. Okay. No. Well, whoever Miriam is, I was told she was here. I'm waiting to talk to her too. So, we'll, we'll help if you. we can get included, it's your brother Ted. Tim's my husband. Tim's your husband. Excuse but me. But I'm a business. I don't work for WOC. I see. I just volunteer I for the record. I made a mistake. I just volunteer. So, Ted is my father-in-law. God bless. Ted is my brother. God. And my personal family has been there since 1921. God. I have letters from John Anson Ford to my great grandfather. Good. So we we've, we've been in the yeah, house a for a while. Little history there. I met John Anson Ford. Yeah. Well, my uh, my aunts are 80 and 90, and they were passing glass to Simon. So this is my family legacy, and this is the community Good legacy job. that I have to do. They had a tip. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. LeBron. Thank you very much. Okay. 
My name is Audrey Cartwright. I'm a teacher. I have, uh, I've been a president of various art organizations on the member board of trustees, and I have received commendations from the mayor council, although not this mayor, not this council in the past, with regards to my help with regards to children who are at risk and in the appreciation of the arts. And it is in that area that I wish to speak. I wish to speak to the, about those children who couldn't be here. I have received Christmas list asking for pencils because they couldn't afford them, pillows. I have given children, hopefully, a paintbrush in their hand so they wouldn't get a weapon. And I can't tell you, you tell me, you want to know where the money comes. Think for a moment of the perspective of that child. Where does the money come from to buy pencils? I worked five years volunteering for kids at risk. And I tell you now, these children don't have any place to go. The Watt Center, I have led hundreds of children through there. I have given them projects. They have been so inspired by a man who had nothing and took from nothing to build something that's a national monument. I have had children from diverse racial, ethnic backgrounds who have melted together. And I'm telling you from the standpoint of an at-risk kid, anyone, I love the arts. I also have a, a doctorate in law. And I tell you that I choose art every single time and I've dedicated most of my life in helping children in the arts. And so many don't have a penny. And I'm speaking to you from them. They need the Watts Art Center. They need the arts programs. It is vital to them. You're having art teachers are being laid off. Art summer schools are being cut. There's no place for them to go. I was here during the Watts riot. I was almost a target just being curious. And I tell you that if we don't have that, you're looking at a summer, a very dangerous summer. The Watts neighborhood has worked very hard to change their image and to work hard to be a peaceful, loving neighborhood. And I say to you that you're taking an area that is so at risk and you are jeopardizing it. And I'm simply going to say now in the words of Albert Einstein, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagine a way to keep the Watts Towers open and the Watts Arts funded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hi, I'm Eric Lair. I'm the um, I'm the sole music teacher at the Barnesville Junior Art Center, as well as uh, I work in the administration as an office assistant. Um, I just I, got, I, it's, I think it's clear that we all nobody here wants to see the centers close, um, and I just wanted to clarify a few sort of nuts and bolts because some things some misinformation was brought up regarding the center. Um, for the spring session, we were just told it was going to be canceled on Friday. And um, it's actually already been truncated. It was eight weeks traditionally for a long time. It's already been changed for the last, I think, three sessions to six weeks. So that's one thing. Also, we lost our executive director. Um, she passed away over a year ago and has not been replaced. So we haven't really been really running without a director, which we can do and have done. Also, as, uh, as an office assistant, I was um, made to take over a full-time position for a long time and when we didn't have that position filled. And I was able to do all of, all of the work um, successfully. And as I think anybody else would, too, I'm not really here to defend my job so much as just defending the center, because even if I didn't have a job there, I'd want to see the center open. But I just want to say it can be streamlined. It can be run more effectively. We don't even have a main director right now. I think the early retirement people were doing that, so to say, the center, not because they really wanted to retire right. you know, early. I think it was all about saying the center. I think they'd be willing to keep teaching time in if they could. They don't want to go either. They're not here, so I wanted to represent them as well and say that there are effective ways of doing it. And, and we would also like to go back to eight weeks because as an instructor, six weeks is really hard to get from knowing nothing about music to being able to <laughs> play music or any art form. So. Thank you for your comments. All right, I have a list of cards. Does anyone else want to speak at this time? Mr. Cornwell want to speak? Okay, so Mr. Cornwell is our last public speaker. Madam Clerk, would you uh, read these into the record too? Read those names into the record before Mr. Cornwell speaks. 
Um, Hold on, uh, Mr. Cornwell. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Michael Cornwell. Hold uh, on, Mr. Cornwell. We know each other too long. I could do that. For the record, read those into the record. Additional speaker cards were submitted by George Simpson, Levin Hansom, Danielle Brazel, Suzanne Tara, Raymond Phillip, Alyssa Sherwood, and Tom Dower. Great. Thank you, Mr. Cornwell. Thank you, Councilman. As you know, um, if I'm here today because of the late, great um, John Ferraro, who appointed me to the Cultural Affairs Commission many years ago, and that introduced me to the Watts Towers community, and I've been involved with it ever since. I'm so impressed with the community there that how it's evolved and observed as I'm involved with the Watts Towers conservation effort I've observed the activities at the at the center, uh, young kids playing the piano, uh, kids out doing art, there's a garden. Uh, I heard someone on the radio say recently, well, they can close, uh, you know, our center now, but after the riots, they'll find money to open it again. And I really believe that's true. But I'd like to speak directly to the, the what's been lost in this debate is the, is the cultural monument, the Watts Towers, the conservation effort there has already somewhat collapsed. Um, the curator is out on, uh, or the conservator is out on sick leave, uh, workers comp. Uh, the assistant's been transferred to Barnesdale Park. So the important protocols to conserve the Watts Towers are lost. And I, I would urge that the towers be put back on the endangered list, which the National Con uh, Trust put on the endangered list after that great earthquake. But the center, without an arts instructor, the center can't really function. Uh, and there's, I don't know what, is the tower just going to close? Every time I'm there, I see visitors from, last week there was a group from uh, Stockholm there to look at it. It's known all over the world. And the city's gladly, sadly, um, not promoting the towers in their efforts to expand tourism. I don't know whether they're afraid to bring people down there or what, but it's just, it's, it's, I've, I've walked into some of these centers down at the downtown hotel where they have everything about the, about the city, where to go, but the city has nothing there about the Watts Towers. So I would say if, if, if what's forecast is allowed to happen, uh, there will be international consequences in terms of the Watts Towers. And Olga and her staff are struggling, all the real estate they're responsible for I mean, would it take a, a staff of three times that large to keep it all operating? And I think the management of all this has never been adequately looked at by the city. It doesn't make sense for the art department to be managing so much property, but that's the way it is. And I just hope that the Watts area in particular, which is the cultural center of Watts, and if it's allowed to close, I think there will be consequences that will be unfortunate and when I heard that the councilwoman and candidate for a lieutenant governor had asked the city administrative officer to add the Watts Tower Center and the, uh, the Jazz uh, uh, Prop K building to be added to the closure, add to the list that should have a, a privatization, I was stunned. I heard in a uh, Cultural Affairs Commission meeting that they were so stunned that they called her to ask her if she really meant that. And it was confirmed that she meant it. And that says to me that Councilwoman Hahn doesn't know what's going on in her own well, district. I, I just want to say, Mr. Cornwell, we've known her a long time. Ms. Hahn is, uh, uh, as all members, uh, dedicated. The concept of, and people use the term privatization, mm -hmm. it's not privatization, but a public-private partnership. As you know, as, a, as someone who knows how facilities try to get that extra support necessary. So let's uh, take your comments to I the record. I think the, 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 the partnership is important, but it can't be done in a period of a few months. Absolutely. That's why we heard loud and clear. We knew that coming in the door. But we have to have a public comment. And if you were here on time, you would have known that. But, Michael, I yep. love you, and I love your passion. Okay. And I kid you because I knew you probably took the uh, goal line. Okay. Did you? <laughs> Did you? Yes. Good, yeah, good job. Good for public transit. Thank you so much. All right, Michael, get everybody a hand there, here. Now listen, on Wednesday, do you want to speak on behalf of Ms. Hahn, please? Yes, this is not item two, this is item one. Okay. 
Thank you, Councilmember LeBanch. This is Jennifer Rivera with Councilmember Hahn's office. I just thought it was important to address all everyone's comments here today and Certainly. wanted Good to make job. sure that they're aware that Ms. Hahn's very committed to the Watts community and she completely understands the needs and concerns of that area in particular and we are very committed to work with the community. I think this is the first time that I'm aware and I'm sure she will be aware that perhaps a public-private partnership may not be the best idea. I think we can sit down with the community and work together to see what needs they'd like you know, to be met. We're currently working with the department Mr. to make Cornwell, sure there are we're no answering closures. Your questions. Listen to we're this. currently working with the department to make sure there are no closures or no blackouts in, at the Watts Towers at that art center because we know how important it is to all the community and to the children there. So just wanted to make sure that that is known for the record. Thank you very much. Okay. Now hold on a second now. Hold on a second here. We go there. It's all right. Instructor. All right, here we got it. Now that's real important and Ms. Hahn articulated through her office there. We all have to work together and this is the key. And I know your husband. So and I and he's a good man. The so I got it. I got it. That's it. And that's what's so special. That's so special about this whole meeting. Cuz everybody got together from uh, from Sunland to Hunga, to San Pedro, to Watts, to West LA. So item one will be in council on Wednesday. Correct, Ms. Schechter? At what time? There will be an update from general Well, we're gonna take this whole issue into council with a report. Do we have a, uh, a placeholder? Can you attach? No, I don't think so. But what about our thing when we did the thing when we had the thing for the library department? We had a line item on the library department. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Thank Mr. Reyes for his help today. He came back, help us get there. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Okay. On Wednesday, there's a council meeting that will discuss a variety of issues, including this issue. Okay. If we're not successful at that moment, I will put in a motion to have a single item all on the arts to try to address this issue scheduled at a later time. We are running against the clock, and the clock is not ticking as much as we would like it to in our favor. So with that being said, this item number one, if you could come back to the City Hall, and if you could come back uh, after 10 o'clock on Wednesday, this will be heard in there. There will be a, a there may be not as a requirement for a public hearing. Uh, it is agendized as the standing item with the reports from the departments right. on their budget issues. What I will ask to, and I don't want to play uh, favorites, but there's a lot of Bardsall people, a lot of Watts uh, supporters. Uh, I want to try to get uh, some voices from all, including your voices there at some point, and I ask for a, like a, a brief public hearing at that time, because I think all council needs to hear your passion, which is real important. So with that being said, I thank you uh, for coming down on this committee meeting and look forward to continuing to working with you to try to find solutions for all issues, uh, all issues that are important as it relates to uh, arts. As I said, as you look at the city, there's public safety, there's public works, and then there's public humanities, which are so important, and all have an equal base. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. And we're going to go to item two. Do you have something else you want to add? Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. All right, we're going to have item two. Hold on when we clear the room. Yes, Paul? Just one question. One question. Did we meet with... Uh, we, I have an actual yeah, if anybody wants to meet, this is going to be a quick item. I'd love to have a conversation if you got a few minutes. I'll stay. I'll stay. Stay. I'll stay. I can stay. Stay. Yeah. stay. Well, we'll see what everybody schedules. Item two. Okay, item two. If item please two, please either sit down or leave the room. This room, the meeting uh, is still going this, on. Uh, this meeting is still on. Okay, item this two. motion right here, we're going to verbally amend the motion if it's okay for the city attorney. Into the record, item number two, instruct the Department of Cultural Affairs to work with Council District 15 to ensure there is a no gap in service should a provider not be chosen prior to the next fiscal year, 2010-2011. Whether this means the Department of Cultural Affairs continues to operate or can work with the uh, 
community leaders to continue the service is still the question. But I want to move that with that amendment item. And this is the, uh, for the clerk's rule. And it's a committee of one. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you have that, you can hand that, so you add that to the report. So that completes the formal part of the meeting. Now, Madam, Madam uh, City Attorney, is that all right? That, that's okay there? All right, so that worked out well. Okay. On item two, are they? Okay, anyone want to speak on item two? Sure, come on up. Is this Liz? Hi. Hey, Liz. Liz Schindler Johnson? Yes. Yeah. I'm Liz Schindler Johnson. I'm the executive director of Grand Vision Foundation. I'm also a volunteer. Um, uh, Grand Vision is a 501c3 whose mission is to preserve and promote the historic Warner Grand Theater and foster arts and cultural event events in and around the theater. We saved the theater in 1996 from becoming a swap meet, and we put our heart and soul into the theater since then. Um, we I, I don't really speak for myself as I speak for all the seat holders. Um, over, uh, there's over a thousand seats that were adopted in this beautiful historic movie palace um, in the mid 2000s um, because the this is the community center. I'm going off my notes here, but we've done um, we've raised over 1.5 million dollars, and we've um, we've done the city does over 150 events at the theater regularly. There are many providers, presenters, from um, pops concerts to foreign films to theater um, producers to dance producers who rely on this community facility for their livelihood as well as for you know all the um, you know arts provision to youth and um, seniors and the entire community. It's a very diverse community, and the Warner Grand serves everyone in our nascent um, San Pedro Arts, Cultural, and Entertainment District. We, um, there are many things I wanted to say earlier, but I wanted to say that there's a few points about this that we wanted to mention. One is that we would urge that instead of an RFP, an RFQ be considered to look at the qualifications of applicants and better understand how they would run the theater and why they should run the theater. We also um, uh, urge that um, uh, uh, that uh, that. Anyway, let's just say that's that's enough there. But um, we want to st we want to be there for the DCA and work closely with the DCA and the city to ensure the theater doesn't go dark. It's as important as has been stated by all in all these other issues and all these other art centers. Thank you very much. Also, for, uh, the former man of the year for the San Pedro area, Jamie Wilson. Thank you, Councilman Labange. Again, thank you for being there Thursday for the yeah, festival. Yeah, thank you. Now. Uh, I'm speaking for the Chamber of Commerce of San Pedro and for this Community Redevelopment Agency's Community Advisory Committee, which I chair. We look at the Warner Grand Theater as the economic center of our downtown, and we, working with a lot of neighborhood and community groups and neighborhood councils, want to make sure that our community will step up and help fund and operate that theater if there's a gap, we want to keep it open because it is, is vital to our, our community. Thank you very much for taking Thank the time. Thank you very much for your time. There's no other public comments at this time. City Attorney has a comment. Before the meeting is adjourned, we need to hold off on item number two. There, there, I think we have a procedural error. Councilman Reyes left before you called item number two and made the amendment. Uh -huh. So um, there may be a problem with that. We're discussing that with CD. Well, could it be a committee of one? Well, certainly, the committees frequently act with not a quorum. They're able to make a recommendation right, to council. Right, they're able to make a recommendation to council to amend the ordinance as you instructed. But our office is not quite sure if that's procedurally what they want to do. Could so we amend it in council? That may be another alternative yeah. as well. Okay, good. All right, now, uh, since we do, we're going to hold that on the desk. We're going to have open uh, mic right here. If anyone has uh, an idea, uh, they want to add anything, Paul, come up here. Come up here, if you would. Um, in, uh, I, I didn't address the revenue item, but I, I see that, that the time ticking makes that important. Right. Um, there were 60,000 visitors to, to Barnsdall Park in 99. There are only 12,000 this year. We know for sure that we can increase the revenue and decrease the expense on an interim basis if you were to go to an RFQ, which we're suggesting, uh, in the meantime, until you award that RFQ, hopefully by July 1st, 
you need an interim plan. There's a very specific elements that I'm addressing to you and to Olga about the interim plan that are very, very specific. We need only two employees to keep the center alive. Uh, the gentleman to... That include custodial and... Uh, no, no, I'm not talking. We're talking cultural affairs. In other words, it, it, the city has a legal obligation per the grant deed to keep the art instruction alive. That can be verified. Okay. So let's start from there, and now we'll say that that, that, it, it, that obligation was undertaken by the Department of Recreation in 1927. It passed as a lessee to cultural affairs. Cultural affairs is the lessee. The problem is you issued an order on an instruction on, on the 10th of February saying cultural affairs, create an RFP, and the very next day somebody's phone rang, and the, the uh, order turned into zero funding. The problem with that is you can't make a transition with zero funding, regardless of the city. I have a solution. Now let me get to the solution. The solution is very simple. Keep two jobs, Livia, Lydia, I'm naming them and giving you the salary sums. Here's uh, what I want you to do. We get too specific for a committee. Okay. Once you go meet with Mr. Garcetti's good deputies. Well, uh, actually, here today. with Olga and Saul as well. Yeah. All right. Good. Do go do that. Yeah. If okay. I can meet with them for a few minutes, it's. But I'm sure they'll have some time right after this meeting. You okay. Get ready. Thank you, Paul, very specifics. much. All right. Okay, Paul. In in the uh, one one percent for art program, I was a member of a group of artists that were uh, had a huge cooperative gallery. And there was a building out on Ventura Boulevard in the 172,000 area that they spent their 1% for art by giving us space in that building instead of an actual piece of art or a piece right. of sculptry. So uh, at the time, I found that the, the parameters for, for using that money seemed to be extremely broad and, and not terribly specific. What year was that? Oh, uh, last maybe. century. Mickey, Mickey, yeah, no. <laughs> not that long ago, folks. Not that long ago. Uh, L.A. Art. Mickey Kaplan was the guy who ran the 1990, show. Nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety-five. Ninety-eight. All right, we'll look it up. Look it up in records. You know, uh, but who did you work with from uh, Mr. Browdy, or did you work with what council person? Uh, no, the the person that Mickey worked with was Al Nodell. Al, I don't talk to Al Nodell. Neil and Al Nodell. Okay. Okay, good. So that's Super. to say, the, the, money, the money isn't as, as restrictively used as, as you seem to it. Now. It is now. They changed the 1% for our the, parameters. The interpretation by the attorney's office is much stricter as to how the department can use that money. Much, much. You should get on the microphone if you speak. Okay, okay. So here's the thing. We'll look at that, though. Ms. Lair. Hi, I just wanted to, to make clear a few things that at least the Barnesville Art Park Foundation is very concerned about. And one of them is that, um, that we do use this as an opportunity, that this is not something that the DCA should be running, and they, it, it, it hasn't worked for, for many reasons. Right. And in privatizing it, we don't want to end up where the other centers did when they started. They struggled for 10 years. I mean. The majority, uh, Claire explained how well they're doing now, but this is 15 years later. Right. The first 10 years were a disaster, and Barnstall is way too important for that to happen to. So if we could get a, a modest amount of the budget that now goes into the Barnstall Art Park, right. we could do a, 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 um, a nonprofit could, could run that. Um, to, to world-class standards as, as, an, as a world-class center. Very We've good. worked out the numbers. But here's what, here's what just but to give you an I idea. To, uh, Reyes brought up something. <laughs> Mr. Like, Reyes. Yeah, Mr. Reyes, sorry. Uh, brought up something that we went was, to the same high school. You know, Mr. Hickman would have corrected you in English on that one. That's true. <laughs> um, that this is not something that can be run by volunteers. This right. is a very professional... Yes organization right. and, 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 and it should become a, a prof an institution of I got it. world but, class. You know, the county had a problem years ago, and they went out and got these partnerships. The county of Los Angeles, county recreation and parks, has the Hollywood Bowl under their jurisdiction. It's operated by the Philharmonic organization, but it gets a stipend, a big one, from the county to help that cost. To bridge it, right. Bridge it. To Bridget, so those types. Because we don't, I can just, just want people to understand, there are many imaginative and innovative ways to, to get revenue, but you can never get enough revenue 
from the services you provide to, to, to make that budget. So you need a five-year lead time to get the foundation money. Exactly, but we may not have five years, but we'll figure it out. That's what okay. we do. How's your brother doing? Both of them are fine. Both of them are fine. Good. Thank you so much. Hello again. I'm back. All right. um, I just wanted to say again about our, our art instructor is gone. So right. we need that like to be looked at immediately. And we, we also want to be able to really be separated out in a way where privatization is looked out thoroughly because if it's not done correctly, we're going to suffer for the next 15, 20 years, just like the William Ray Photography Center right. is no longer in existence because it was privatized out and city gets busy and through attrition you have people get promoted and move to other cities right. and they forget the history of development in the area. The, the Watts Center has world-renowned we don't even have to advertise. We're not even advertised. When they call down, the police department gets us. So the cultural tourism development there speaks to the fact that everybody comes to this city. The leading industry is tourism. Right. We've got everything we need. All we're asking is for the city to come together and to allow us this next five years to develop ourselves into being uh, a proper place to receive them, both structurally and archi architecturally and culturally and so we're the communities right where they need to be in developing that we just need the city to include us in the plans as opposed to planning without us thank you thank you thank you very much you're my council person yes I'm right down the street from you I'm in Toluca Lake but I'm yes. the director of the Watts Towers Art Center and Charles Migos Youth Art Center I've been an employee for 20 years with the city working for the cultural affairs department the Watts Towers Art Center is not just an art center uh, our art instructor who's just been let go actually is a is a true example of why it exists. Uh, he grew up in the community, he went to school in the community, he went to college, he came back, and now he's teaching at the Watts Towers Art Center. He's been an employee for the, with the city for 11 years, and uh, he's one of the one who has a two-week two week notice. Uh, we are a social service organization, too. Parents come, they are looking for their kids when they run away because they know they will come to us first. Our building has not been tagged in 50 years, and there's the gap is there every day, all day long, in the community uh, taking graffiti off of the area. It's a place that everybody res respects. The Bloods, the Criff, the Fifth Hill, the Tenth Line, the, the Grape Street, all of them respect that campus because they know that young people can come there and be safe. They also know that they can come there and get food to eat. Our children know that they can come after school and get a snack. They know that they can come in there anytime to uh, have support from us. So I'm just advocating for our center because it's so important that our council people understand, and I know you do, that we are your gift to the community. We represent you in the community by offering these services that ensuring that there's equal arts education for all children. Our children won't get it if, we, if we're not there. So we want to continue to represent you in the community, the council people in the community, by providing to the constituency insured arts education. And our community is, de is in desperate need of that. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. If I just may, yeah. this is something I hope will be a, a springboard, an idea that an opportunity is coming in the near future, which may help the situation for the arts in Los Angeles as a whole, and it's but focused on the Watts Towers. Last year, a year ago, uh, this April, was the first in international academic conference about the Watts Towers at the University of Genoa in Italy. A number of people here in this room were there. The next international academic conference on the Watts Towers will be right here in Los Angeles, sponsored at UCLA. It's called the Common Ground Initiative. It already has the support of the Italian consulate and the Italian government. Part of the focus of this is not just the towers, but the towers role in the community and the importance of the arts and the arts center to that community. Uh, there will be people from all over the world coming to this conference. I believe that this uh, is a springboard for some of the ideas we need to keep that, uh, that campus open and functioning. And uh, all of Los Angeles better be aware of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That closes general public comment on general public time. Let's go back to item number two. Do we have a report for the city attorney? that you 
had read the amending motion, that's going to go forward as the recommendation. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah that's that's okay. That's okay. All right. That's okay. Okay. So I'm okay. You're okay. A lot of work to do. No other cards in front. Thank you very much for everyone's participation. And uh, Ms. Garai, we have a lot of work to do to figure out a way to continue the importance of arts in our lives here in Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody.